to see you, man. Oh my, yo, oh me, even devils do believe. James 2 and 19, so I prove it. Prove it. Every scripture I'm living through it. Do it. That's how I make it fine. Uh, wake up every morning and I hop out of bed. Gotta deal with my oppressor, all these thoughts in my head. I ask the Lord for some direction, can't take back what I said. When I ain't had that much discretion and was wicked instead, I cannot do it. Control the beast and hold the beast. When they lawless out here on the streets, make you want a piece of that temptation. Ain't no discrimination in my nation. Demons jump from house to house, and they always changing faces. Pull that Romans 15 and 4 straight from the door. Take a good look at our forefathers, and you gon' get some hope. Just imagine that you was Joseph when you deal with a hoe. Or you was chosen and lost it all when you think that you broke. You know that Satan walking around like a roaring lion, waiting to devour all the sons of God and the daughters of Zion. He gon' try it, so it's up to you what you gonna do Play with fire or take it higher, cause the kingdom's for you yeah. Yeah. Oh my, yo, me, say right beside me Like Zachariah 3, how I do it, do it That endurance, I just push through it, do it Can't you see it, man? Oh my, yo, me, even devils do believe James 2 and 19, so I prove it Crossroads over set before me, life and death. Yeah. Ain't selling that, gotta keep that. All I got, never get it back. Yeah. He trying to get me, but I'm fighting hard. No more playing that lust card. No yeah. more on them hunger games. I'm getting it in a righteous way. I. Work him hard every day. Dang. Pulling like six a week. Six. Overtime, getting no sleep. Yeah. Ain't a rest for me, but that's the recipe to endure, man. This ain't my place of rest. Every time they arrive, I'm passing every test. I make the same mistakes. A new lesson learned. I bounce back, get stronger, another strike earned. A soldier in this war on the battlefield. In Babylon, the great America, the plan field. Waiting on my kingdom to come. When the father send back his son, then all is gonna be done. But hold up, hell, horse in the clouds. Trumping, sounding out loud. Don't want my sins to weigh me down. Searching for mercy after death. I need it right now. Oh my, yo, me, say you right beside me. Like Zachariah 3, I do it, do it That endurance, I just push through it, do it Can't you see it, man? Oh my, yo, me, evil devil, do it James 2 and 19, so I prove it, prove it Every scripture I'm living through it, do it That's how I make it plain Benjamin bites in the area, okay. 100 to my last day, day. Before I hit the streets, always gotta pray, pray. Run up to the spot, wow. wanna block with the work, wow. non stop, wow. make it hot wow. all day, let wow. it spray. Might be a one way trip, yeah. Me and my brothers at the strip, warfare. Strapped up, came up out the whip, then we marched hey. to the spot, hey. on the block, let hey. it rip, let hey. it rip. No fear, dog, get a grip, get a grip. Might be a one way trip, yeah. Strapped up, came up out the whip, then we marched hey. to the spot, hey. on the block, let hey. it rip. I don't need a mic, I need a reader. Deep the block leader. We gon' put it down, no line, no need to. Shout out to the teachers. Two man can't bring an Easter. Call it what you want, huh? You gon' feel the heat out of Peter. If a heretic approach, we gon' beat him. Let's fall in line. Cherish turn the heat up on the meter. Think it's nothing, you ain't running from the Reaper. Your mama ain't either. Or Big Bone Sheila. Running behind a woman, he gon' turn your ass to Cedar. Bang, bang with it. If you need it, we gon' feed you. Ain't nothing to get instructions from the leaders. You ready for a change? Bring it to the people. Brother standing bold, purple gold with no equals. Hold the dead line, that's a sign of a Hebrew. Ain't worried about his life. Ready to die for this kingdom. Believe him. Might be a one-way trip. Yeah. Me and my brothers at the strip. Warfare. Strapped up, came up out the whip. Then we marched hey, to the spot hey, on the block. Let hey, it rip, let hey. it rip. No fear, dawg, get a grip, get a grip. Might be a one-way trip. Yeah. Strapped up, came up out the whip, then we marched hey, to the spot hey, on the block. Let hey. it rip, let it rip. I miss a day, then I probably feel a way, way. Rolling with the pack, so you know we on the way, way. Face like rocks and a squad never play, and we got the block in a chokehold 
home for the day. City gon' flood, cause we comin' with the wave. Shout out to the elders for the way y'all pay. Yeah, double honors for the hard work getting gave. Always kept the real from the start to the grave. Hey, NY Detroit, shout out to the A. Yeah, game plan, then we run a bliss where you stay. Yeah, worldwide, never really think small ways. Nah, came for the sheep, and you dogs gotta pay. Yeah, Elohim said he got something for the rats. Wow, loyal to the cause, and I can't stand a rat. Bench of vice wow. going hard, yeah, we push it to wow. the max. And it's through to wow. the bank, we be laying up wow. stacks. Might be a one way trip. Yeah, me and my brothers at the strip. Warfare, strapped up, came up out the whip. Then we marched to the spot on the block, let it rip, let it rip. No fear, dog, get a grip, get a grip. Might be a one way trip. Yeah, strapped up, came up out the whip. Then we marched to the spot on the block, let it rip. Defender of the feet, man, anything goes. Kiss my daughter and my son, tell them kingdom is the goal. No more sorrow, city make out a goal. Time is easy, truth, even though we grow old. Man, I risk everything just be save one soul. My treasure in a heaven, beer, silver, and gold. The dream team, I saw we big and we bowl straight to the end, and you know we not fall. And I pray that you protect me when they come in my way. Keeping commandments, we be on it all day. All day. He got it planned, so we gon' do it Yahweh. 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 And I pray, I pray that you protect me when they come in my way. My way. Keeping commandments, we be on it all day. All day. He got it planned, so we gon' do it Yahweh. Yahweh. <laughs> we the, we the goal, we the people that he chose when they took us into slavery. Our identity was stored. We Put on boards, we was brought here, we was sold We was forced to work on fields on top of that We served our foes, that ain't right Image stolen from our side They didn't tell us Christ was black They lied and told us he was white We bringing facts straight out the Bible Now we know the heathen titan When they see us keep commandments Bro, that's something they don't like So I pray that you protect me when they come in my way Keeping commandments, we be on it all day Plan, so we gon' do it Yahweh, Yahweh. And I pray, I pray that you protect me when they come in my way. My way. Keeping commandments, we be on it all day. all day. He got it planned, so we gon' do it Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh. Yeah. I keep commands of most high, that's why I lift my hands up to the sky. Man, I'll pray for better times. My enemies plan on my demise. The scriptures stand, they never lie. My faith in God, I never die. I tried, it's useless. We coming back in full strength, holding the line. We breaking their bands and keeping the laws and spoiling their plans. Pull up my pants to do my dance. They watching the class, they looking mad. I understand, man, time is running up real fast. But we got a chance if we learn to keep all the God in mind. That you protect me when they come in my way. Keeping commandments, we be on it all day. He got it planned, so we gon' do it Yahweh. And I pray that you protect me when they come in my way. Keeping commandments, we be on Dream Team. Dream Team. Benja by Tanati area. Okay. 100 to my last day, day. Before I hit the streets, always gotta pray, pray. Run up to the spot, wow. on the block with the work, non stop, wow. make it hot wow. all day, let wow. it spray. Might be a one way trip, yeah. Me and my brothers at the strip. Warfare, strapped up, came up out the whip. Try your luck. A lot of these demons is trying us. New man alive, I can't die enough. Jews they been black, no denying us. Be cursed to be on me, can't cry enough. Longing all day for the freedom. I got some enemies more than just eat them. They don't understand it, he told you in Peter. Trying to get back to the garden of Edom. This is the last show. The righteous judge standing at the door. Six rings on me. Like MJ all to praises, third all to praises, all Double praise to the Most High. Shalom, family, shalom. Most High in Christ, bless. Most High in Christ, bless. <laughs> yes, sir. It's yes, gonna go down. Sir. It's gonna go down. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to another edition of Escaping the Plantation 2.0. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll pray to the most high Oscar Light, IUIC Jackson, Mississippi. To my left. Officer Hosanna. All praise. Hosanna. 
To my right. Officer Zariah. Uh, is your mic on now? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll <laughs> pray. I can't hear nothing. I can't hear nothing. Nothing. And to my far right. Soldier John. I'll pray. Soldier John going to be holding down the reading for us today. So, hey, look. It about to go down, bro. Yes, sir. Mm. Ain't got time to play no game with no Christian. Mm. No Christian. Tell him. Oh, hell what no. What the word is? What you said? Christian. Mm. We ain't playing around with them today because I'm going to show you why we ain't playing around. We ain't got time to be sparing no feelings, okay? None whatsoever. Not when it comes to the word of the Most High God, all right? Now, uh, many of these apologists, many black Christian pastors and so on and so forth, they have run with the ideology or with the idea, right, with the rumor or the slander that we Pharisees. Mm. They say the Israelites Pharisees because we push God's commandment, but didn't Christ push God's commandment? Huh? Then the apostles push God's commandment. I'm trying to figure out. They favor they favored the apostle Paul. He pushed God's commandment. Wow. Mm. That's but we right. Pharisees. <laughs> but we're gonna show you today in the scriptures. We ain't the Pharisees. Then the Pharisees have money. Then the Pharisee kill Christ. Bring it on. What you mean? <laughs> what you talking about? But we Israel. We Israel united, united in, in Christ. Christ. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure out. You understand? Oh, wow. We not we not a part of no other Israelite group. Did you show the did, did you show the disclaimer at the beginning? We not affiliated with no other Israelite group. Whatever they doing, that's what they doing. You feel me? We ain't doing that. We we teach Christ. We teach the commandments and the faith in the Black Messiah. You that's right. That? You understand? But they say we Pharisees. But we're going to show you today out of the Holy Bible and history that the Christian church, the Christian pastors, right, and their followers roll in the spirit of the Pharisees. We're going to show it to you in the Bible, okay? With that being said, let's start out with Psalm 71. You know what I want. The book of Psalms, chapter 71 and verse 2. Go ahead. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. So we ask the Lord to deliver us in his righteousness and cause us to escape. You know, God is righteous. I'm going to tell you how you know. God is just God because God done put us through hell for breaking his commandments. Yes, sir. But if we repent and keep the commandments, he's going to give us glory twofold of what our enemies have taken from us. That's you right. We're going to get the whole world back and everything else in the universe that the God, that the Lord got for us. You understand that? So with that being said, the most high is righteous. So we ask him to, uh, to deliver us in his righteousness. We keep the commandments and faith in Christ. The most high going to redeem the children of Israel. Right. You understand? Go ahead. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. So we ask the Lord to save us, cause us to escape this hell that we in, escape the plantation. Cause that's what Christianity is. It's a plantation, right? That's and your Christian pastor. He the taskmaster. He the house Negro keeping you in check. He the uh, what was Samuel Jackson's name in Django? I always forget. Stephen. He old Stephen. Who that nigga up on that nah? You understand? Yeah, he that one. You understand? Bruh. That that's who Christian pastors is. That's who the Christians is. You understand? So we trying to break free. We out there in the field looking for ways to get up out of here. What are we doing? Going in the Bible trying to figure out how we gonna get redeemed. You that's understand? That's right. So. With that being said, hey, real quick, go to the Who's Who of the Bible, right? There's a book called Who's Who of the Bible. I uh, admonish you all to get you one. You understand? I encourage you to get you one. Who's Who in the Bible? Get the one with the Old and the New Testament in it. I think mine got the Apocrypha in it, too. I left it in the car. But I sent you some screenshots of it. Let's look at them screenshots real quick. Who's Who in the Bible? Let's look up Pharisee. We're going to read Pharisees, and then we're going to go in the Bible. We're going to show you the similarities between Pharisees and modern-day Christian pastors. That's right. Since we the Pharisees, we're going to go into it right now. Yes, read that. Pharisees, Greek for separated ones. Mm. At the time of Jesus, the Pharisees were the most powerful religious group among the Jews and his constant opponents. Wait a minute. Just, just pay attention. Because the nation of Islam ain't coming against us. Egyptologists, they done got smashed years ago. They done sat down. They don't even come up to us with the IRA and all that stuff no more. They, they be A Shalom, A Shalom, brother. <laughs> with the uncle named nigga, A Shalom, Shalom. Bruh. <laughs> they done got beat down too much with the scriptures. So they not coming against us. You understand? Who always come against us? Who always come against the true followers of Christ? Who always in opposition to the word of God? Christians. The hell is this? When Christ was on the scene, the Pharisees were his constant opponent always against him and they were the most powerful religious group of that time what's the number one religion amongst black people in the world today you already know 
Christianity. You understand? Keep reading. Jesus continually denounced their external observance of the law, their multitude of petty traditions, and particularly their self-righteousness. Now, we want to deal with something. It says Jesus continually denounced their external observance of the law, their multitude of petty traditions, and particularly their self-righteousness. When it says that he denounced their external uh, observance of the law, what that means is he knew that inwardly they were hypocrites. Because remember, read that real quick in Matthew 23, verse 1 and 2. He didn't say that when they was teaching the commandments, they was wrong, right? He said, don't follow their works because they hypocrites. You understand? Now watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 23 and verse 1. Come on. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Read. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you, Read. observe. Go ahead. That observe and do. So Christ said, look, when they teach you the commandments on the Sabbath, they bringing out the scriptures on what you need to observe in the law. He said, do that because it's coming from the word of God. That's true. Right? Go ahead. But do, but do not ye after their works. But don't do after their works. Why? For they say and do not. That's Christianity in a nutshell. Because they read the Bible at the church. Everybody in the church got a Bible. You know how you go to church, you got the, uh, in the pews, you got Bible, and then you got the little hymn book. We all went, we all know that, right? You got those in the church. So the Bible's in the church. And craftily, they do what? They quote scripture. What? Out of context, but they quote it. You understand? They're incorrect, but they quote it. So if, if, a, if a pastor tell you, hey, thou shalt not kill, brother. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Is that not true? Absolutely. But if he killing and he commit adultery, the Lord said, do not follow their works. It's the same That's spirit. That's right. The same spirit, right? Uh, go back to the uh, book real quick. We're going to come back to Matthew 23. Let's go back to the book. So it said, Christ always denounced their external observance of the law because they said and did not. Their multitude of petty traditions and particularly their self-righteousness. Now, you got to ask yourself, traditions, 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 traditions. Get Matthew 15. Traditions? What traditions? What were they doing? And then let's see if, if, if Christians do that today. Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Is that not Christianity in a nutshell? That's it right there. They transgress God's commandments for their tradition. They know the Sabbath on Saturday. You hear them say, yeah, we know the right. Sabbath on Saturday, brother. Right. But we can worship God any day. It's right. always been my family tradition to go on Sundays. What you got? They, oh, they don't do Passover, but it's their tradition to do pastor's anniversary. Wow. Huh? That's what they do. And if the, the pews be filled, packed, jam-packed. Hey, also, they'll argue with us about having to keep the ceremonial laws, right? The, the, di uh, the dietary law, but ceremonial law, they really be having a problem with the Sabbath. They have a problem with the Sabbath. They have a problem with Passover, tabernacles, anything, any custom that you see. And they, they feel like it's, go it's only for the Israelite, which it is only for the Israelite. But they think the white man in Israel is the Jew today. So they'll argue you down about why y'all keeping Passover? Why y'all keeping uh, um, uh, Hanukkah, Feast of Dedication? Why y'all doing that? You understand? Y'all ain't no Jews. Y'all ain't no Israelites. Why y'all doing that? Then we ask them, okay, well, it's in the Bible what we doing. So we wrong or not, we still doing something biblical. Where in the Bible it say you're supposed to put a tree up in your house and put silver and gold on it? Bring it up. You understand? Where it say in the Bible that you're supposed to hunt rabbit eggs when rabbits don't lay eggs? <laughs> like, where it say that? You got to show me in the Bible where it say you got to, if you're going to try to denounce what we're doing and what we're doing is biblical, show me in the Bible where it say to do what you do. You understand? That's what we, that's what the scripture said. That's why Christ said, why you transgress the commandments of God for your tradition? It's all traditional. It ain't got nothing to do with the scriptures. You that's right? right. What you got? You, you itching. Go ahead. I seen you. I seen you hit a little shimmy shake. Go ahead. What you got? The spirit on you, bro. Go ahead and say something. Okay, I'll pray. <laughs> hey, go to the next. Go back to that. Go ahead. The Pharisees were the successors of the Holy Ones. Go ahead. Who had fought for religious freedom during the Greek occupation of Palestine from 332 B.C. Like the Holy Ones, the Pharisees had separated themselves by their pious effort to maintain the law. 
Though they were themselves mostly middle class, they had become essentially the People's Party, very different from the Sadducees, the party of the chief priests, who held aloof from the passionate enthusiasm of the Pharisees for righteousness. Mm. Unlike the Sadducees, they believed in angels and spirit as intermediaries between God and man in resurrection after death and in retribution in the world to come. Also, unlike the Sadducees, the Pharisees held that the tradition of the elders was an authoritative interpretation of the Old Testament law of Moses. Wait a minute. The tradition of the elders was an authoritative interpretation of the Old Testament law of Moses, right? Based off the, tra the traditions they have been taught by the elders, they held fast the laws of Moses. Now, they'll see us preaching out of Leviticus. We can't eat certain things. We can't wear certain things. You can't shave your beard. You can't shave your head. And they'll automatically equate us to the Pharisees. But remember what Christ said. He said, do what they say, but not as they do. That's the difference. We're keeping the commandments in, in the effort to not That's be hypocrites. Right. They was hypocrites. It's a difference. Now, let's flip it on Christianity. What do they do? Completely hypocritical. Don't do nothing the scriptures say, but it justify themselves using certain scriptures just like the Pharisees. Same way. Keep reading. They would not revolt against Gentile rule. Pause. They would not revolt against Gentile rule. They was afraid of Massa. Who that? Come on, man. Stop playing with me. Who is that today? Who the coons of the black community? It's always Christians. The Nation of Islam brothers don't be cooning like that. The Egyptologist brothers don't be cooning like that. The five percenters, the, the, the Freemasons, you understand? Them brothers don't coon like that. It's always the Christian black man, the Christian black woman. They, were, they refuse to revolt. When I say revolt, I don't mean obviously to try to overthrow the government. We ain't talking about no insurrection. We talking about, hey, no, nah, we ain't celebrating no Christmas. We ain't celebrating no holiday. We ain't voting. We ain't doing none of that. Right. They won't do that. The black bourgeoisie, that's what they are. Go ahead. They would not revolt against Gentile rule. And notice it said most of them was middle class. That's something heavy to remember. Message. Because it's not a lot of rich, rich black people. Majority of the black bourgeoisie are only in the middle class to Esau. When Esau making uh, multi-billions and you making hundreds of thousands, although we would all like to have that, <laughs> yes, that's middle class sir. to the white man. Right. You understand? You at the bottom, bro. Go ahead. If God was in charge of history, they held, it was not man's place to force his hand. Mm. Whereas the zealots... And I understand what they're saying not to revolt in like the zealots and the Sakari and so on and so forth. I understand that part, right? But we're talking about spiritually. That same spirit is in the Christian pastors today. I'm going to show it to you. Go ahead. Whereas the Zealot Party burned to establish a national kingdom by force of arms, the Pharisees waited for God's intervention through the Messiah. Wow. But then the Messiah came and they rejected him. Just like right now, the truth is on the earth and they reject it. Go ahead. Go to the next book. I mean, next page. Excuse me. There we go. Zoom in. Though, though probably few in, though probably few in number, perhaps you got to pull us down. Perhaps six thousand at the time of Jesus, the Pharisees were much admired by the man in the street for their uh, austerity, oh. mm -hmm. both for their hatred of pagan rule and for their challenge to the rule of the chief priests. Go ahead. They fostered synagogue life and worship calling back to a study of the law and its application to their own time. Read. They consisted mainly of businessmen, shopkeepers, and teachers, but with some priests also. So they was about their money. Businessmen, entrepreneurs, and I'm not saying we're not doing that. We're not trying to establish that. But Christians, they worry about that bag, bro. That's why they tithe so much. You understand why they always holding fast to tithing and so on and so forth. Go ahead. Their fellowships held regular meetings and prescribed rules for the admission of new members. Mm. These rules included the observance of seven hours of prayer. You see this? They add on. They add to it. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. The Pharisaic interpretation of a tithe of one-tenth of all possessions to the temple. Stop it. Damn, son. Stop Where'd right you find there. this? The Pharisees said, you got to give us one-tenth 
of everything and it's got to go toward the church building fund. Huh? Who say that now? Who do that now? I told you the spirit that's in them is in the Christian pastor today. And this is how you know they come against us the same way. They come against us the same way they came against Christ and his followers. Keep reading them. We'll Fast get to that. Fasting twice a week on the day when traditionally Moses ascended and came down from Mount Sinai. Read. And performing scores of ritual washings and offerings. Besides the complicated code of food laws and Sabbath regulations. We'll go ahead. All these were, of course, additions to the Mosaic commandments of the law. Read. The Pharisees regarded with scorn go all. Ahead. Go ahead. To the next page. Zoom in. All those words who did not come up. All those who did not come up. down, bro. You can't see. To their own rigorous standards. Such people, the Pharisees relegated to the depressed class of sinners. Contact with whom rendered the Pharisee himself unclean. So. Guess what? If you a sinner, we invite you to get your spirit right and come learn, right? The Pharisees That's will reject right. you. That's Christianity. That's Christ that bro, listen. There have been many cases we can go on the internet and find there have been many cases of people that have been destroyed by Christianity because because they couldn't teach them right, because they didn't know the understand of the scriptures, they couldn't give the people the evidence of why you going through this, why this happening in your life, this the reason God not okay with that. We the Israelites, we got to keep the commandments, get salvation. People feel judged, people feel rejected by them, right? A lot of people feel rejected by Christianity. They feel like they're not learning nothing. You understand? Then they come to us and they be like, "Man, I ain't know this. I'm trying to. I, I, I didn't know all this." Go ahead. Opposition group to Jesus. Go ahead. In the gospel narratives, the Pharisees are often linked with the scribes through whom they exerted their influence upon the minds of the people. That's what I wanted. They exerted their influence upon the minds of the people. Go ahead. For the scribes presided in the local courts and taught in the local schools. Three. It was inevitable that many Pharisees were bitterly opposed to Jesus mm. and constantly denounced by him. They rejected his claims to messiahship. Read. John 9, 6 and 16 and 22. Go ahead. He condemned their ostent ostentation, their hypocrisy, their doctrine of salvation by works. Meaning animal sacrifice. Go ahead. Their impotence. Now say they say you're going to get salvation by believing on yeah. Christ and what? That moolah. Give me that 10%. Go ahead. Their, their impenitence and their lovelessness, mm. which were so far from his own life and his teaching of the free forgiveness and love of God, culminating as it did in his death on the cross. Right. So watch this. Let's go from there real quick. Give me Philippians chapter three and read verse five. Right. Philippians chapter three, verse five. Then I want you to go to the little thing that I had sent you. It's the last link I sent you. It said, who are the Pharisees in the Bible? Who are the Pharisees in the Bible? We're going to show you something. But I want to show you something real quick. Remember, it said they were middle class. They were educated. Right, they went to the schools and so on and so forth. Let me show you this. Give me that real quick. The book of Philippians, chapter 3 and verse 5. Right, let's jump in on this too. Go ahead. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew, Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. So Paul said, man, I was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I was a Pharisee, meaning what? I was the upper echelon, the well-educated, the well-spoken, the best-dressed. That's right. That's what Paul's saying about himself. He said, yeah, I used to get it in with them. I used to run with them, just like we say today. Yeah, I used to be in the Christian church, <laughs> getting lied to, paying all these tithes, giving the pastor my uh, my um, my tax return, the whole, the the whole check, giving them how much I'm making taxes. They said, okay, well, you estimate. They got they actually got tax people in the church calculate. You make how much a year? 47000 47, a year. After taxes, we'll carry the three. Okay, you should be able to pay 4700 this month. Bruh. You should be able to, that's 10% of 47,000, ain't it? You should be able to pay 4,700 this year in, in, in uh, tithes. Wow. Hell <clears throat> no. That calculates to such and such uh, each week. <laughs> right. They done broke it all the way down. They done gave you a payment plan. The hell is this? Go ahead. Right. I can say real quick before you move on. Can Go I jump in real quick? Go ahead. Just because um, the, uh, the book we were reading talks about how the Pharisees were in opposition to Christ. The Bible called that something. The Bible got a word for that. You, you was going to pull that? Uh -uh. Let me get that in first John. Because a lot of our people don't don't really realize that their Christian pastors are the defenders of white supremacy. Right. When I say that, we, when the Bible say Jesus black, get what they say? 
Either he white or it don't matter. The huh? Bible say keep Passover. They say, no, nah, do Christmas. Bruh. They say, the Bible say, do the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath the way Christ did. And they say, no, nah, do it on Sunday. What? You understand that? You can, you can worship God any day you want to. Let's get that in 1 John chapter 4. Let's, uh, yes, sir. We're going to jump straight to it. Read that. The book of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3. This is the spirit of the Pharisees in opposition to Christ. And this is also the same spirit that's within your pastor. Read. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming the flesh mm -hmm. is not of God. Most of your Christian pastors don't say that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. One, they don't know what color, they refuse to accept what color f flesh he came in. And other ones, I didn't heard they just say he's just a spirit. He right. cast with a friendly ghost or something like that. What? Read. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Wait a minute, what's the spirit they rolling in? The spirit of Antichrist. The Christian pastors are in the spirit of the Antichrist, or right. opposition of Christ. It's not Damien. It's not this somebody with a 666 on the back of his neck. It's your Christian pastor. It's right. your grandma that's on the motherboard. It's your uncle that's a, a deacon, or right. Ursha, like we call it down here, Ursha. Right. It's your pastor rolling in the spirit or in the opposition of Christ. What the Bible call it, read it again. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Read on. Whereof you have heard uh -huh. that it should come. Uh -huh. And even now already is it in the world. Every Sunday you go to church, you're looking at the spirit of Antichrist. Right. I'll pray. Damn, son, right. where'd you go find this? Philippians chapter 3, where we was at. Read verse 5 and 6 again together. So your, your Christian pastor rolled in the spirit of Antichrist. They anti everything Christ taught and did. Go ahead. The book of Philippians, chapter 3 and verse 5. Go ahead. Circumcised the eighth day uh -huh. of the stock of Israel. Read. Of the tribe of Benjamin, an Hebrew of the Hebrews. A Hebrew of the Hebrews. Go ahead. As touching the law, a Pharisee. And as touching the law, this brother was a Pharisee. You understand? He was the, the upper echelon of Israel at that time. The, the, a part of the most powerful religious group of the Israelites at that time. Go ahead. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Wait, what did he do? Persecuting the church. He persecuted the church. Meaning what? He went against the he went against the Israelites that believed on Christ, just like today. Your Christian man, these folks ride around the city we be in trying to find us to argue with us. Bruh. They not coming to learn. They coming to cause disruptions at camp. We've seen it happen. We can we see somebody getting out the car walking real hard. We say, yeah, that's a pastor. There you go. We already know. Here we come. We just stand over to the side. That's when, that's when somebody else teaches you. just stand to the side. So watch he interject himself. We just sit back and watch the whole thing play out. Happen every single Sabbath. What the hell is this? Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Right. So go from there real quick. Go to Acts 26, verse 3. Let's get a little, little bit more in depth on Paul real quick. Acts chapter 26, let's read verse 3. Yes, sir. The book of Acts chapter 26 and verse 3. Especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which were among the Jews. Speaking to Agrippa, because Agrippa came up uh, as a convert. Go ahead. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Read. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem. Know all the Jews. He said, all the Jews know me. They know I used to be in the church, <laughs> basically. Just like us. They know we used to be in the church. But Paul used to be in the schools. He learned from the Pharisees at the feet of Gamaliel. Go ahead. Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. The brother was of the most straightest, uh, straightest sect of the religion. Meaning what? He was following the most extreme customs with the traditions that they added to it. So Paul was a part of that, hey, 10%. You understand? Pay your 10%. You understand? Paul was a part of that, wash your hand before you eat. Adding traditions to the word of God. Hey, if a son or a daughter get to a certain age, anything that they mother or father profit off them, they say, well, uh, Corbin, 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 you understand? Anything, any money you make off me, you understand? Anything I may have to benefit for you, it's a gift. He, they taught not to honor your father and your mother against the contrary to the commandments of God. You understand? That's what they're saying right there. Hey, give me that book real quick or that, that link I showed, I said to pull up. Who are the Pharisees in the Bible? And I think I want the third paragraph. Let me look at it real quick. We just read all this earlier. Go down. Uh, go down. Go down. It's a, it's a specific, specific part of it that I want. Uh, keep going. Keep going. I'm going to tell you where to stop. Uh, the New Testament depicts, yes, the New Testament depicts. Yes, sir. 
the New Testament depicts the Pharisees as opponents of Jesus or the early Christians. Mm. On the other hand, they warn Jesus that his life is in danger from Herod, Re invite him for meals, are attracted to or believe in Jesus, and protect early Christians. Paul asserts he was a Pharisee before his conversion. Go ahead. The clearest New Testament statement of Pharisaic distinctives is Acts chapter 23 and verse 8. The Sadducees say that there is no resurrection. Go ahead. And that there are neither angels nor spirits, but the Pharisees acknowledge them all. This would give the impression that doctrine was the basic concern of the group. Go ahead. However, Mark chapter 7 verses 3 through 4 say that the Pharisees do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing. To they, listen to what he said. He said they come off as it's about doctrine. It ain't about doctrine. You understand? It's because they want to do what they want to do. The same spirit that was in them is in Christians today. When Christians come on Clubhouse to come against us, when Christians come up to the to the to the to the uh, camp to come against us, they're not coming against us because they got a problem with our doctrine. Hell no. They got they coming against us because they want to do what the hell they want to do, and they want us to stop teaching what That's we teach. That's right. Because we pulling people out of their out of their ministry. We pulling people out of the church. They coming here. You yes, understand? Go ahead. Sir. The Pharisees do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. A tradition. Go ahead. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. Thus, we're also, thus we are also told of the Pharisees' concern for washing, ceremonial cleansing, and observance of the tradition of elders, a description of the oral law. Matthew chapter 23 calls attention to their number one positions of religious authority in the community. Thank you. That's exactly what the Christian church is. Go ahead. Number two, concern for outward recognition and honor. Ah. Yes, sir. That's some heavy stuff right there. Yes, sir. Message. Give me Matthew 23, what he's talking about, verse 4. And I want you to pull up that picture of them Christian pastors giving out turkeys and, and Christmas gifts and stuff. You know what? You know the little picture I told you to get? Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 23 and verse 4. Go ahead. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and they lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not remove them with one of their fingers. It said, whoa, 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 read that again. Read 3 and 4 together. Yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 23 and verse 3. Read it All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. Go ahead. But do not ye after their works, Read. for they say and do not. Go ahead. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne. Go ahead. And lay them on men's shoulders. And lay them on men's shoulders. Go ahead. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. They ain't going to do it. These pastors don't be tithing. They be telling you, hey, give me 10% of everything you got, all your hard-earned money. These pastors some gangsters out hey, here, man. Wait a minute. You on point. I ain't never. The collection plate went around the whole church. Yes. And the only person in there that ain't putting nothing in there was the pastor. Is the pastor. <laughs> the leader of the church. He the only one that ain't giving no money. This? So so tithing pertains to everybody got to keep that law except him. He's exempt from that law. This is ah. what I'm saying. I'm telling you. The scriptures uh, bear witness. Go ahead. Verse 5. Watch this. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Pa read that again. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Give me a picture. Let me say something. All that worst they do. Look at that. Look, 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 look. Now you know that's a pork chop eating pastor right there putting turkeys in a bag trying to give people turkeys yes, on Thanksgiving. Yes, sir. This is what they do. This is exactly what they do. Read it again. All their works what? But all their works they do for to be seen of men. All their worst they do for to be seen of men. Go ahead. They make broad their phylacteries. And enlarge their borders of their garments. Go ahead. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts. When it said they were abroad in their phylacteries and enlarged their borders of their garments, they had the big kung fu fringes, the big, you know what I mean? <laughs> Them big old fringes. Bruh. Now the pastor got the five, five suit, the, what they call it, Armani, the Armani suits, whatever. What's the best suits out there? I don't know. I don't, I don't really wear stuff like that. That right there. Anything, name, Are you, anything Armani, anything <laughs> Italian here. What'd you say? Custom made suits fit their body. They be fat. 
You ever seen them big old fat pass with the little leg looking like Robotnik? You remember Robotnik? Pull up Robotnik. <laughs> bro. Pull up Robotnik. That's your boy Tommy That's your boy. That's I'm talking about DDJ. <laughs> That's him. Hey, look, pull up Robotnik. If you used to play Sonic the Hedgehog back in the day. Dr. Robotnik. Dr. Ah! Robotnik. He was real fat with a little bit of skinny right. legs. I started That's calling what he, him Dr. Eggman <laughs> <laughs> on the later game. Oh, <laughs> oh hell no. He's shaped like a damn egg. Hey, pull it up real quick. These are your Christian pastors today, man. They be having them custom-made suits on. Yeah, yeah, pull that one up. Look. <laughs> Hey, bro, hey, come on now. Nah, hey, nah. then your pass. Hey, pull up a picture of TDJ, bro, when it comes to suit on. I guarantee you he looked like that. The Bruh. shoes and everything. Hey, he, <laughs> he got leggings on? Are those leggings? That's how tight they jeans be. Robotnik was wearing the first leggings. He was wearing the first, uh, uh what the, what's, the, what's that, elastic? What is that, plastic? What is that? They melted that on his skin. They it look like they connected to his shoes. All right, so you tight. can see how much money he got in, in his pocket. <laughs> bro, you got $5 and 22 cents in your pocket. Oh, bro, you know that? Them jeans oh, tight oh, as hell. That's how I know. Hey, pull up. Hey, pull up. <laughs> pull up your boy real quick. Look. There you go. Look it's at this, Dr. man. Robotnik. That's Robotnik right there. That's him. God, dog. Hey, go back to the picture. <laughs> go back to Robotnik real quick. Go back. Can we do like a side-by-side? -side you can't do no side-by-side, -side, can you? Well, you just, you you left robot you let him go. Don't let my boy go like that. He always come against Son of the Hedgehog. You know Bruh. we young. Nineteen nineties, baby. Sega Genesis. Hey, he look like Robotnik, bro. Got the tight skinny jeans on, and he round. <laughs> he round with the skinny legs. Look. Bruh. Now, can we pull up a side by side, or is it, is it impossible? You can't do it. You can do it. Okay, let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. I, I don't know. I don't know. You can't do it. Ah, oh, you ain't got the capabilities. It's Bruh. all good. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It has been declared. So it says they brought in their phylacteries and enlarged the borders of their garments, meaning they like the nice, flashy. They want to be seen. Everything they do is to be seen. That's, That's Christianity. Right. Christian pastors don't care about the neighborhood. They've never cared about the neighborhood. You know how they, you know they don't care about the neighborhood? All the surrounding houses around the neighborhood are jacked up. But that church, fenced in, security 24-7, is beautiful. You say, why is the church in the middle of the hood if you're going to have it fenced in like that? If Bro. people are not welcome to come to the doors and come in and learn, right there you go, oh, you redeem yourself. All praises. That's your boy, that's your boy TDJ right there. Skinny jeans, fat as hell. Hey, bro, come hey, on now, dog. Give me the video real quick come about on, the pastor man. that asked everybody for a thousand dollars. Them folks got on his ass. Hey, keep reading real quick. Verse six, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts mm. and the chief seats in the synagogue. Read. And greetings in the markets and to be called of men, rabbi. Rabbi. Which means what? Master, master. They love to be called reverend. Man, listen. You want to see a Negro coon when a pastor walk in the barbershop? Negro, what's up, reverend? How you doing? How you doing, pastor? You be like, man, nigga, wake up hell. He ain't got no beard. He bald-headed. You know what I'm saying? He, he, got, he eating a salami sandwich as he walked up in this joint. It stank when he walked through the door. Smell like, you know, Bruh. shrimp, crab, and lobster. The hell is this? You understand? You got that You got that video? Put a video up real quick. So they love to be called a man. Oh, that's the rabbi right there. That's the pastor right there. Let's start this video. We're going to go to three minutes and 56 seconds. I'm going to try not to interrupt. I'm going to try not to. Watch this. Paul, Paul, Paul. I ain't see this. I didn't read this. Read that for us. Read that. No need to open your Bibles. I've got mine open. It says right here. Second Hesitations, chapter 7 and verse 24. <laughs> Tied your money. So the man of God don't be starving to death. Damn. <laughs> Who raised I'm going to say, what is man that with the, with the drops? That's crazy. Go ahead. Well, there's no peace in this house of worship. New Era Detroit stages a protest that turns into a brawl. That video right there has since gone viral. Now, this is the same church that recently hosted Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump. But this protest is about more than just politics. Fox News' Randy Wimley live now with the exclusive story. Randy. 
Yeah, guys, this has a lot more to do than just politics. New Era Detroit, they call it church accountability. Taking congregations to task for not serving the community in their estimation as those churches should. They say something doesn't add up when a pastor makes a lot of money, drives a luxury car, and yet the people who live near his church are in poverty. <laughs> A scuffle inside the sanctuary after New Era Detroit protests during a worship service. Bro, let me go, man. Let's go. Let's go. Zeke, the leader of the group, offered no apologies for the dust up at Great Faith Ministry Saturday, only the reasoning behind it. This situation is bigger than just Wayne T. Jackson. This is about black churches and black pastors who live a lavish life on behalf of the people and they're not giving back to their community. He's referring to Bishop Wayne T. Jackson, the wealthy pastor that welcomed Donald Trump, drives a Rolls Royce, and lives in a mansion. Yep. Zeke was there for the offering Saturday. When they started the offering, a thousand dollars and then they said if you don't got a thousand dollars then do 300 and if you if you if you don't got if you don't got cash then we got atm machines I don't wow understand bro. That logic. pause that I don't bro understand that. pause that bro oh, well, no. now see this the thing this this is why we read this is why we've been reading the scriptures about these men that's the same spirit that was in the pharisees the pharisees was uh, in cahoots with Rome. Remember that. Get that real quick in um the book of uh, John chapter 8, verse 44 real quick. We're going to read 11, but I want to read 844 real quick. Watch this real quick. Read. John 844. Come on. Start at 43. The book of John chapter 8 and verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father, the devil. You of your father, the devil. You understand? Your, your slave master, Rome, and his descendants, which is the modern-day uh, Edomites here in America, taught you seminary or cemetery. You understand? Taught you, taught you theology. Taught you apologetics. That's right. And you follow that thing. You understand? You doing everything your master taught you. Now your brothers come out and say, bro, you wrong according to the scriptures, bro. And get, you get bashed over the head with the scriptures, but you still run back to your slave master's ideology. So ah. you of your father, the devil. Go ahead. And the lust of your father ye will do. And the lust of your father ye will do. Think about how much oppression we done been through as a people. Then you come out of the same oppression. Because most pastors come from poverty. Right? Most modern day Christian pastors, black Christian pastors, they come from poverty. Impoverished conditions. And then what they do? They become a pastor and then oppress the same people that they was once in the streets with. Bruh. That's the Pharisees. That's the same spirit they had in them. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning Go ahead. and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So Esau, which got the spirit of Satan in him, Satan is a spirit and the so-called white man is the devil and Satan's spirit is in him. He lied from the day he born. Get that real quick. You know what I want? And I, and um, Psalm chapter 58 verse 3. This is how you know it. They said when he it said when he speak of the lie, he speaketh of his own, because he is a for he is a liar and the father of it. From the day he born, he lied. Get that real quick. You know what I'm talking about? The book of Psalms, chapter 58 and verse 3. Go ahead. Bring the up. wicked are estranged from the womb. They say the wicked are estranged. Uh, estranged from the womb. They ain't right. Go ahead. They go astray. As soon as they be born, as soon as they be born, they go into evil. You got to think about the, what the Lord is saying about the spirit that's in that infant baby. When that infant baby come out, it goes astray. It ain't, it ain't on the path of righteousness. It can't be righteous. It can only be evil for the rest of its life. That's all it can do. That's what the Bible telling you. That's what God saying. in the depths of how wicked this man is. It's in that's his spirit right. to be a demon. It's in his spirit to oppress. It's in his spirit to kill. It's in his spirit to lie. Go ahead. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. They go, as soon as they born, they speaking lies. You know how the, the doctor smacked the baby on the behind, the baby crying? As soon as that baby get to crying, the Lord said, you're lying. They ain't Bruh. hurt. You're lying. They ain't hurt. You know what I'm saying? First thing they say coming out, Google and Gaga, they lying already, already forming. That's they right. You know what I'm saying? the niggas that so I can oppress them? I'm back, baby. I'm back on the earth to oppress niggas. You understand? The black, and they, now, he came and had Donald Trump sit down with him. That's all a ploy. Then the next week, he do a thousand dollar offering from all his members. What do you think that for? Man, our pastor got power. He sat down with Donald Trump. They do that for him. He got influence. Let's let's raise money. Let's raise money for the campaign. 
So you of your father, the devil. You understand? Now go back to the video real quick. Back to the video. Pick it up right where we left off at. So and go back a few seconds where it said he sat down with Donald Trump and he drive a Rolls Royce. Go back just a little bit. I want to see that part. Yeah, go back just right for it, right there. To yeah, that bro, He's Bruh bro said he tired of this. This brother right here, he said, I'm tired of them doing the, the, the community like this. Now, of course, he don't know he is real. He ain't got the scriptures. He got some sense, though. But he got enough he got sense, sense to say, you know, they doing the people wrong, man. Right. Go ahead. The Get Great Faith fly. Ministry Saturday. Only the reasoning behind it. This situation is bigger than just Wayne T. Jackson. This is about black churches and black pastors who live a lavish life on behalf of the people and they're not giving back to their community. He's referring to Bishop Wayne T. Jackson, the wealthy pastor that welcomed Donald Trump, drives a Rolls Royce, and lives in a mansion. Zeke was there for the offering Saturday. I mean, they started the offering at a thousand dollars, and then they said, if you don't got a thousand dollars then do 300 and if you if you if you don't got if you don't got cash then we got ATM machines I don't understand that logic I don't understand that way of thinking and I don't understand that to be what religion is New Era Detroit says the neighborhood surrounding great faith ministries is by and large impoverished this guy has networks churches fancy cars you know what I mean million dollar houses and it's babies in this community that's going without food at night wow. somebody has to be frustrated about this enough to do something that will get people's attention and that's what New Era Detroit did. Here's the thing. Pick up the phone. Call. Right. I want to talk to you, Apostle. Right, right. Apostle's a very fair man. He would meet with you. He would talk to that you. That nigga ain't no What's damn What's your apostle? issue? But to do it that way, that is so disrespectful. And members of Great Faith Ministry say look, New look, Era look, Detroit pause, has pause. their church and... He called some people up there to come and talk on his behalf to the news. When the news reporter reached out about what happened, he went and got a whole bunch of people Gave them a little money and no. said, tell them I gave you an apartment. Tell them I gave you a house. Tell them I helped you with a business. Tell them I loaned you money when you ain't had no place to go. Nick, well, that's what you're supposed to do. You're making millions off of them. That's right. That's the same thing the white man do to Africa. He steal billions from Africa, then he give them 80 million. He said, man, we gave y'all 80 million dollars, but you done stole 50 billion from them. 500 billion. What's 80 million and 500 billion, bro? Two cents. That ain't nothing. That's the, that's the whole mind trick. That's the whole trick bag that they put our people in. The devil working with these men. You understand? When, when I say the devil, I mean the so-called white man. He backing them. That's Go ahead. right. Go ahead. And their pastor all wrong. I bet you give away homes, yeah. cars. They say he's an astute businessman. Juanita Kinney says he's one with the heart of gold. Hey, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. I want you to hear the word he used for him again. You say it again. He's a what? Play it. And members of Great Faith Ministry say New Era Detroit has their church and their pastor all wrong. I bet you give away homes, yeah. cars. They say he's an astute businessman. Pause. Juanita Kinney. What we read the Pharisees were? Businessmen. Message. That's what they are. That's what they do. You understand? It's the same spirit. Right? They go celebrate their birthday. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Birthday celebration honoring Apostle Wayne. Wait, see? Add that, man, come on, you can't make this up. The most high gonna reveal it to you, bro. You, bro, and then this, these, this new era Detroit, those are some young men and some young women that's sick of the stuff that's going on in the community. They see the brothers and sisters that they, they, live, in, they, they live in the hood. But they see the pastor only come up, come one day a week driving a Rolls Royce with a damn police escort. Right. They said the police don't come around here when we call them. Right. Huh? But they come to escort him into the church. Come on, man, you got to think about what's going on. It's the same spirit the Pharisees had. Go ahead. He says he's one with the heart of gold. And when he found out that I didn't have anywhere to live, within an hour he was calling me back telling me to go and look at an apartment. And because of that, and because of the love from him and his wife, I now have my own place. You should talk to people that, he, that, that he's hired. Ex-cons, people that were in prison. Mm. He's done so much work for this community. Their homes that he's bought and gave to people. But Zeke don't know that. Many feel New Era Detroit crossed the line and violated a sacred space. They even drew comparisons to Dylan Roof. The man Paul, who walked Paul, into a church. Paul, 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 When I was young, when I was young, my pops used to say, charge somebody up. You know what I'm saying? That mean you go, you know, hey, look, bro, I ain't, I ain't playing. You know what I'm saying? It's real. You understand? That's what it's called a charge up, right? They went and charged them pastors up for asking people for $1,000 from that broke community. 
They they compared this brother to Dylan Roof. Didn't Dylan Roof kill nine people? Yeah. Why they was praying? But they can forgive Dylan Roof, but can't defend it, forgive their own brother. But can't forgive their own brother. That's the spirit of the Pharisees. Same spirit. Right? Give me Titus 1. You know what I'm talking about. Titus 1 and 10. Let me show you something. Titus chapter 1, verse 10. The book of Titus. Chapter 1 and verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers. There are many unruly and vain talkers. Go ahead. And deceivers. Uh huh. Especially they of the circumcision. Especially they of the circumcision, meaning what? The southern kingdom, meaning what? Judah. <laughs> Them black <Bruh>. pastors. <laughs> Go ahead. Whose mouths must be stopped. Read. Who subvert whole houses. They tricked the whole house, had a whole house jacked up. That's what you see with all them people. They subverted. He didn't got them. He may have helped them out one time in 20 years of giving tithes. I think you owe me a house. Right. And all right. that is, really. That's their money. <laughs> if they he money. actually did that, right. they ain't nothing but collateral. That's all it is. That's so he can say he did something for the people. Because he want to be seen of men. men. Go ahead. Whose mouths must be stopped. Who subvert whole houses. Teaching things which they ought not. For filthy lucre's sake. For what? Filthy lucre's sake. For filthy lucre's sake. You just saw he was having a big old celebration. Big old pastor celebration. Get what he gonna do. He gonna have a celebration at the church. Then he gonna hit the club VIP that night. How many pastors you see in the club? <laughs> Them pastors be in the club, bro. Right here in Jackson. Right here in Jackson, Mississippi. Pastors be in the club. You pay by the club. Pastor, he got a little, you know, he got a little, what's name on his face? Bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Lord. Michael, Michael 3 and 11. <laughs> COVID-19, nah. he got the mask. Ain't nah, that pastor see. such and such? <laughs> Reverend? Rem? Hey, remember that time the pastor was in the barbershop and told us uh, and said that, uh, what'd he say? He said if a dude sleep with his wife, he, he caught his wife in the very act, he gonna stay. This nigga, you crazy. Oh, hell no. He's stupid. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you hey, crazy bro, as hell. Come on now, dog. You gonna right. walk stupid. in on your wife getting come smacked. On, come on, man. man. Think about what you done. Come on, bro. Think about Stupid. when you was in the world, you was wicked, what you was trying to do. You trying to show out with somebody else, girl. You going all the way. You doing all the tricks out the trick bag. And you going to walk in on your wife doing that and say, you know what? By the grace of God, I stayed. Now, you crazy. Get up and wipe your face and come on home, come on. baby. Oh, God. Bruh, oh, God. You got to really, you got to, you got to give him a plan, You got to make it graphic, officer. You got to think about it. He walk in, she on her knees. Wait a oh. minute. Wait. Stay Wait in the spirit. Oh, Stay in the spirit, bro. Oh, you just Stay in the spirit. You don't walk in. You don't walk in. Hell no, cuz. <laughs> Hell no. No, cuz. <laughs> How can you take it back? Though? How can you go to Proverbs? Go to Proverbs. Let the Bible speak, brother. <laughs> you know, I want Proverbs. I want Proverbs. <laughs> Chapter 30 and verse 20. Let the Bible speak. Read. <laughs> Don't get us taken off this show, damn it. <laughs> Give me Proverbs 30 and 20, man. The book of Proverbs. <laughs> We're going to have to get... It might be your last show, brother. I'm just giving him a hard time. Give me... I've heard worse. I've heard worse, Israel. I've heard worse. Go ahead. Lord have mercy. Woo! Give me Proverbs 30 and 20, brother. Please the book read of Proverbs Save us. 30 and verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Read. She eateth she... At... Oh, oh. So that, that's why I had to get the Bible. So they wouldn't be because you know we don't read the Bible. People are gonna say them folks up there talking graphically. Let's read the Bible. Read the Bible again. What the Bible Such say is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth. Damn. Go ahead. And saith, I have done no wickedness. She said, what I do wrong? I ain't did nothing. Bruh. You understand? Okay, so look, the Bible say that, y'all. The Bible say that. <laughs> okay, I saved you, bro. You all right. <laughs> Go to Michael 3 and 11. The Bible says she eat and then she, she, don't worry, she wipe her mouth and say she good. I ain't do no wickedness. What I do wrong? Wow. Give me that what I said, Michael 3 and 11. Yes, sir. The book of Micah, chapter 3 and verse 11. <laughs> Bring it up. The heads thereof judge for reward. So that's what we reading about right here. The heads thereof judge for reward. The only reason they in these churches teaching is because they want the money. Go ahead. And the priests thereof teach for hire. Read. And the prophets thereof divine for money. And the prophets thereof, they divine it for money. Go ahead. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and Yet, say. Then they're going to say, well, God gave me this blessing, brother. God put me in this position to help the community. But you ain't helping the community. You're a Pharisee. Go ahead. Is not the Lord among us? 
None evil can come upon us. None evil can come upon us. That's what they're going to say. God with us. That's what the Pharisee was saying. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me get First Timothy 6 and 5. Pretty much the same thing like Michael said. Mm -hmm. The book of First Timothy, chapter 6 and verse 5. That's what they won't say. Well, that's the Old Testament. My right. pastor ain't like that. Oh, yeah. Watch this. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. Uh-huh. Your pastor has a corrupt mind. Robbing the community. Robbing them blind. And you say, he all right. He helped me get an apartment. He could have helped you get a house with a couple of bedrooms and bathrooms. But instead, he let you get a little studio apartment. Right. You see what I'm saying? What the hell is this? Just make you feel good. And he'll Reed. pay three months rent and then you are your own. <laughs> right. Read on. And destitute of the truth. Uh -huh. Supposing destitute that, of the truth, he don't know nothing about the Bible. He's not really teaching the laws of God. Read. Supposing that gain is godliness. What do you suppose? That gain is godliness. When I get the, I got all these tired because God blessing me. Right. God blessing me with this. Why you mad? Read it again. Read that last part. Supposing that gain is godliness. Watch what the Bible say. Do with these people. From such, withdraw thyself. Get away from them. Leave them alone. I'll praise to the Most High. Hey, go ahead, Austin. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got, a, I got a, um, an article, so you go ahead. Hey, do me a favor. Let me redeem myself. Read Matthew 14. Bring it out. And restart at verse 14. <laughs> That's right. You still on that? No. No, oh, I'm not. I'm off there. I'm off there. I'm you done all right, bro. We I'm just done with that. We I'm just done. messing with you. <laughs> the book of Matthew, chapter 14 and verse 14. Because let's right? see the, 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 the way the real Christians of Christ supposed to act. Read. And Jesus went forth. And saw a great multitude uh -huh. and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. So Christ healed the sick. When he went out, when we go out to the neighborhood, we see the condition our people in. We try, we go out and heal the sick. That's what we do, Read. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place. And the time is now past. Uh -huh. So we finished with, 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 uh, with, with bringing it out, Read. Send the multitude away. That they may go into the, into the villages and buy themselves victuals. So that, that would be the mindset of the Pharisee. You know, hey, I done brought y'all the word. I give me your tithe. Now y'all go get your own food. You know, pay your own bills. You know, don't ask me for nothing, but give me your tithes. Let's see what Christ said. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. So they don't need to go nowhere. The word right here. Right. What did he say do? Give ye them to eat. No, go, go, go to McDonald's and get you a, a, a four for four. Give ye them to eat. I think that's when this, right? I knew, I knew that. I knew that. Uh, read that again. <laughs> but Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. So Christ commanded the disciples to feed his people. Right. That's right. That's and right. no, it's not pork chop after your right. Sunday that's service right. either. <laughs> right. <laughs> not like the Pharisees where they would where they wanted all of the money. When we come in, when we come in Israel, you know, we do we in poverty just like the rest. That's how we can relate. That's how we can go out to the to the neighborhood right we come you together everything we got we got it together right and we put our money together and we make this thing work we, we we're able to get buildings we're able to do decorations all that stuff that all come from us coming together ain't nobody giving us no loan that's right we ain't got no uh no none of them uh chris they got them christian loans where they help them buy churches and stuff and give them the money for the renovation we ain't got none of that everything Hell we get no. we earn it ourselves we got jobs up yes sir go ahead finish the video out real quick get to three minutes and 56 seconds it was something else I wanted. I came in with a word. It'll come back to me. Bring that video back up for me, please. And gunned down nine people in Charleston, South Carolina. They can't come in here and think they're going to take over our service, have our women and children, mothers up in here terrified. And they're talking about that they are out there protecting the community. This is a community up in here. Yes, right. Hindsight is 2020. Given um, all this being said, would you do it all over again? Absolutely. We would definitely do it all over again. Would we tweak something? Absolutely. We, we, we would probably tweak up a few things and change it. But going back, no, we, we would definitely go in there again. And they better get their act together because we just might be back. Pause it. That brother said we ain't playing. We're going to take it, we gonna take it right. to the streets. So we got to call him. Hey, let the call in. Hey, Shalom, caller, you on with Escaping the Plantation 2.0. Who we speaking with? Hey, Shalom, most high Christ blessed. Hey, Shalom, most high Christ blessed. Who we speaking with? Yeah. Hey, this is uh, uh, King Simeon. <laughs> oh, you a What's clubhouse prophet. Hey, you hey, a clubhouse prophet, hey, huh? Hey, prophet is on point. <laughs> Shalom, most high Christ hey, bless you, bro. Hey, prophet is on point. You know that. Uh, 
Yeah, nah, but 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 I'm I'm sending you back Ezra from Providence. I was just joking with you. <laughs> yeah, I'll pray. Yeah, I, I knew but, I knew who you were. I'll pray. Hey, hey, that brother. Hey, that brother. Oh, uh, with the. Hey, hey, give him a chance, man. He's got money, man. All, all, all you prophets is doing the is doing the work, man. <laughs> Who you talking about, Officer Hosanna right money. here? You talking about this brother right here? Yeah, he's good, man. He's good, man. Let him rock. Man. Hey, you know he we good. from the south. We a little graphic down here, man. Yeah, I know, but uh, y'all doing the work. He 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 repented for me. He he was just, you know, that's it. But uh, yeah, so the pa- so so uh, I'm talking about the 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 passes. The passes is bugged out. I know. I I I've been hearing you lately on, on Clubhouse. You've been you've been killing me. You you've been killing them softly. <laughs> um, but these passes. These pastors, I could tell that a lot of these uh, these uh, pastors, they understand that that what they're preaching is lies. Right. But they, I feel like I feel like they 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 dig themselves in a hole. They can't get themselves out of. You right. know what I'm saying? Because we all know that most of these pastors are getting paid by the state. Right. So you know these 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 pastors, I I, I feel like because when I hear you on call out, you be killing it, and I'm like, yo, if that pastor don't repent. He's gonna die. <laughs> right. So, real, like, real talk. Like, I, I, I honestly think that these pastors, they just dig themselves in a hole. That yo, you can't blame them. They just can't get themselves out of it. Right. But if I was them, if I was them personally, I would say, hey man, I'm, 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 a, I'm hey, kill me, cause <laughs> hey, I, I messed up. But yo, this is the truth. Right. Yo, when you hear the prophets talking, yo, you, you, you prophets be out there killing it. Le- leadership be killing it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, um, yeah, I, man, I'll be entertained because I'm a truck driver, so I'll be, I'll be listening to y'all all day, man. All and, praises. And, and all y'all, praises. You know, y'all, y'all be doing the work, and y'all be waking a lot of people up, and the fact that these pastors are strong enough to still come uh, with these fake Pharisee lies, it, it, it's amazing to me. It, right. it, it makes me think that these, pe- they, these, these dudes are getting paid by somebody Hell yeah. to take us down. Yeah, but, you know, like I told you last time, they can't take us. They can't take us down, no matter what they do. Right. You know what I'm saying? This, That's this, right. This, this is prophecy. That's this right. Prophecy. All praise. So, hey, you, you brothers, keep doing, keep doing the work, man. I love y'all, man. Straight hey, up, all from praise the bottom it, of my heart. All praise you know, it, y'all, man. Yeah, 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 real one. All praise it, bro. Hey, Stay in the spirit, man. Shalom. <laughs> Most high Christ bless you. Appreciate yes, you for sir. that. Yes, all sir. praise. So yeah, brother. So hey, send me on point, bro. Like the scripture tell us, you understand that. These pastors, they mouths must be stopped. So we gonna pull it, we gonna tell it like it is. We ain't sugarcoat nothing. You understand? The, we gotta tell it how it is, right? These pastors ain't right, and they destroying a the nation of people, They're destroying a whole nation of people. They guided right. our people in the wrong direction. The scriptures say, "Woe unto them that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor." The Most High ain't playing with these folks. We trying to tell them, bro, if you don't stop teaching what you're teaching, God gonna kill you. You understand? The Most High gonna put you to death. You understand? Hey, real quick, did you finish the we finished the the the, the video then? We got three minutes fifty-six seconds, right? It was long, yeah. Give me um five reasons people have stopped attending the church. Real quick, five reasons people have stopped attending the church. Watch this. I just sent you. It's the last thing. Yeah. Zoom in on that for me. Five reasons people have stopped attending your church, especially millennials. Go ahead, go down. So the young folks, they tired of it. Keep going. I'm gonna get to the, the reasons. Okay, go ahead. In the study, no, just read number okay. one. Number one, the church is irrelevant. Huh. The leaders are hypocritical. Wow. And leaders have experienced too much moral failure. Wait a minute, stop. Damn, son. Give me the Where'd book you find this? of Matthew chapter 20, 23, read verse 14 for me. The book of Matthew chapter 23 and verse 14. Read really? 13. Verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Wait a minute, what did it say? But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. But the people are noticing. The people seeing now. These folks hypocrites. They cheat on their wives. You understand? They using the money. They using the tithe money to, to, to benefit themselves. These folks hypocrites. That's the same thing Christ was saying about the Pharisees. Y'all some hypocrites. Go ahead. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. That's why these people can't get the kingdom. They stopping our people from getting the kingdom of God by lying to them every Saturday. I mean, every, excuse me, every Sunday. And telling them that they ain't got to keep no commandments. Just believe on God. Pay your 10%. That's it. The hell is this? For ye neither go in yourselves. Because you ain't getting the kingdom either. Go ahead. Neither suffer ye them that are entering 
to go in. He said, you can't, the other ones that the people that's following you, you, they can't get in either because of you, because of what you're teaching. That's what this, that, go back to the article. That's what this young, I don't know if it's a, if it's a man or a woman that wrote this. I didn't, I didn't read that. But look at this again. Re read that, that again one more time. He yes, says sir. what? The church is irrelevant. They, they feel like God irrelevant now because of the church. You are scattering the, the sheep of God's pastor. They said, look, you know what? It's irrelevant to go to church. They won't even read the Bible now. Right. You did that. You pastors doing that. You Pharisees is doing that. You destroying people. Go That's ahead. right. The leaders are hypocritical, and leaders have experienced too much moral failure. You yourself is a moral failure. Go ahead. Keep reading. Now, keep reading read what it says. Yes, yes, I know. Yes, I know. That's three reasons in one. But the Bono study groups, all three reasons together as one reason. Go ahead. And I think that might be because that might be. And I think that might because that's what most people do in real life. Uh -huh. I mean, just have a few conversations with unchurched people. Go ahead. They will go something like this. The church is irrelevant. Why would anyone go and full of hypocrisy? Just look at the moral fail of so many of its leaders. You hear this? That is that not, bro? No. Every young man on the street we talk to, they say it's the white man book. I don't believe in that. I don't go right. to church. And you say why you don't, why you don't believe in the Bible, bro? They say because the pastors hypocrites. You realize what you're doing? That's why I say the Most High got a special judgment for you pastors, man. For you unrepentant, That's right? Want to come against the Israelite Pharisee spirited pastors? The Most High gonna bring judgment on you. People don't even want to read the Bible because of you. Ain't nobody ever came up to the Israelites and said, man, y'all made me not want to read the Bible no more. Right. They be like, hey, I ain't some stuff. Man, I, ain't, I ain't stuff and I ain't know. What scripture you said? What Bible y'all reading? King James Version. That's the King James. I got that at the crib. They, they influence. They want to read the scriptures. But when, when they go to these pastors, they don't want to read the scriptures. Right? Go ahead. To some extent, I can't blame people for this perception. Watch this. I wince every time I see another headline announcing a new moral failure. What do you mean? What do, what do they mean by that? He said, he, he, I don't know who wrote it. They wince every time they see another moral failure. What is he saying? Oh, when you see these pastors getting locked up for pedophilia, when you see these pastors getting locked up or, or uh, losing their congregation because they cheating on their wives. Matter of fact, hold that. Give me John Gray. I gave you a video on John Gray. Let me show you this. Let me show you this, right? Give me this. John Gray, the same man got caught cheating on his wife two times with a stripper. Twice. Bruh. Let me see the video. I'm going to tell you what time stamp to go to. Let me have technical difficulties. Okay, go forward. I don't want to see that. Go forward. I don't want to see that. So, quote-unquote, uh, 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 emotional uh, affair, I've noticed that the media, especially social media, has been extremely critical of almost everything Pastor John Gray does. That's robotic right there. his wife and look, look. car to asking his church to pay for repairs to the church roof. Everything this man does is under a microscope, and a lot of people seem to find fault with it. Recently, when Pastor John Gray asked the Relentless Church congregation to give a special offering to pay for the $250,000 repairs to the church roof, Bruh. a lot of people had a problem with that too. For some reason, some people seem to think that Pastor John Gray should pay for the roof out of his own pocket the same way he paid for his wife's Lambo truck. Other people felt that even if the church did pay for it, it should come out of the church's regular offering, not a special offering specifically for the roof. Huh? Pause. Personally, the people said, wait a minute, we already paying tithes, just take it out of that. Why you need a special fund of $250,000? When you really think about it, does it make sense? It don't make no sense. Y'all, you already getting all this money off us in tithe. Why the hell we got to give you some extra money for a building fund when you get money every week? You need to get that Lambo fixed. Right. You can't Bruh. go to a regular deal and get that fixed. Right, exactly. <laughs> what the hell? Hey, watch this. I'm going to show you the scriptures that they did that. Go to um second um go to second chronicles real quick, chapter 34. I'm going to show you. So I'm going to show you in the scriptures our forefathers watch what they did. Second chronicles chapter chapter 34 and let's read verse Nope. Matter of fact, we're just getting in, in. I don't know where it's at in Chronicles. I thought I knew where it was, was in Chronicles. I know where it's at in Second Kings. Go to Second Kings chapter twenty-two. Second Kings chapter twenty-two. Uh, chapter twenty-two. Let's see what King Josiah did. Chapter twenty-two, verse four. Read that. Second Kings twenty-two, verse four. Real quick. The, the book of Second Kings, chapter twenty-two, and verse four. Watch what, the, watch what our forefathers did. 
when there was something going on with the temple. Go ahead. Go up to Hilkiah the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. See that? That was the, the, original, the original offering that the people gave, right? He said, go gather the silver for it. But let's see what he gathered the silver from it for. Go ahead. Verse 5. And let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work. Those are your contractors, your carpenters. Let's get them the money so they can repair the building. Go ahead. That have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Uh-huh. And let them give it to the doers of the work, which is in the house of the Lord, to repair the breaches of the house. See? See? That? Come on, man. The Bible tell you how you're supposed to deal with the money in the church. Yeah, the people are giving sir. an offer, and now you telling the people, "Hey, give us an extra two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Help us raise it." Huh? You understand? But you already got the money that was committed. They taking tithes. You already got the money that was committed. Use that money. That's what our forefather did. That's what the king of Judah did. Go ahead. That's right. Unto the carpenters. See that? And builders. Read. And masons. Read. And to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. That's what we have to do. Right? That's what we have to do. We need to build something. We all come together, and we buy wood, we, and we got brothers and sisters in the body that do different things to help decorate the building. We ain't going out to get no extra. Hey, man, we'll give y'all another 500000 What? Hell no. Hell no. Verse 7. How be it? There was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand because they dealt faithfully. You see that? They dealt faithfully with the money, so then nobody had to go check up on them. Like, hey, man, well, the receipts say $350. You understand? You only gave me when well, I gave you four hundred. You, know I mean? you only gave me thirty dollars back. What that twenty eight, man? They didn't have to say that, cause they gave oh, a correct no. change. We oh. always dealt dealt righteously. Well, we I ain't gonna say always, cause these Israelites right here, we didn't always That's deal righteously right. with money, but we were supposed to. It was in God's law. Give me that real quick. By the Lord hate unjust balances. It's in um, it's in uh, Leviticus nineteen. It's in the law, in thirty five, I believe. Leviticus nineteen thirty five. Let me show you what the Bible say. You weren't supposed to bring an unjust weight. God hate that thing. Go ahead. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 35. That's it right there. Yes, sir. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Uh-huh. In meat yard. Read. In weight or in measure. So meat yard, weight, or in measure. That's going into, look, if I give you a certain pound of whatever, you understand? And I say, here, bring me back this amount. You're supposed to bring me back the exact amount. That's righteous judgment. That's, that's right. That's you doing right by the money. This is why black people can't come together and do business. That's why two, two can't walk together unless they agree on God's law. Well, I figured since you gave me the money, you wanted me to keep it for the next time. <laughs> no, ain't what I told you. I said use this Hell amount. No. Here you go extra if you need it. If you don't need the extra, bring it back. I mean, I'll give you an example. When I was a kid, because kids do stuff like this. I mean, when I was a kid, we was at a little uh, amusement park or something like that. And I remember um, my my uh, auntie's best friend, we used to call her Aunt Tab. She wasn't really my aunt, though. She gave me, like, $20. And I said, the, the ride cost $2. She said, okay, you got two rides. That's how much money? $4. Man, I spent that whole 20 When she said, hey, where my Bruh. $16 at? I was looking like, uh, I got a whooping out of whoopings that day. I got the brakes beat on me that day. <laughs> but I learned a lesson as a young man, though. Don't ever do that. That's what the Bible says. Keep reading. Verse 36. Verse 36. Go ahead. Just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hen shall ye have. Just, meaning what? It balance out. Nobody taking more than they supposed to take. You do what That's you're supposed right. to do for the work of the Lord. Understand? Now, we got to call. Let the caller call in. Or uh, uh, come in. They in? Hey, Shalom, caller, you on with uh, Escaping the Plantation 2.0. Who we speaking with? This officer abides in Ohio. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Also, how you doing? Most high, Christ bless. Shalom, how are you doing? I'll pray to the Most High, man. What you got for us? Yeah, uh, I was touching on what uh, officer was talking about earlier. How the uh, pastors, how they preaching for uh, prosperity? They trying, right. they trying to save they, they churches because we 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 uh, we tearing them up on clubhouse and they trying they trying to save their pocket. That's right. That's right. That's exactly what they doing. Uh, what I like uh, to go with that uh, that Michael three and eleven is uh, Jeremiah twenty three and one. Yeah, read that. Read that for us. We got y'all. Jeremiah okay. twenty three verse one. Read that. Yes, sir. The book of Jeremiah chapter twenty three and verse one. Read it out. Woe be unto the pastors 
that destroy. So it says, oh, so it says destruction unto the pastor that what? That destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. How did they, they destroy and scatter the sheep of the pastor acting for 10% in a pandemic? Right. They've been acting for 10 it's, it's 52 Sundays in a year. And I've been going and paying you for 52 Sundays. And not one time you told me that Christ was black. Right. You not told me that uh, we the true people of the Bible. You've been telling me lies since I was since I was nine, since I however old you is. And now the truth is coming out, and they and they and they and they, and they, they don't uh, hit the panic button trying to save their money. That's right. God ain't gonna let you say it's gonna destroy you. That's, That's it, right. all. Hey, all praises. I also appreciate you calling in. That's a heavy word. That scripture, man, that scripture right there go heavy, man. Bishop did a whole class called what? White shepherds over black sheep. Remember he did that class? Yeah. That that was he when he yeah, highlighted it from that scripture. Yeah, you you on you in the spirit. Also, I'll praise to the most high. Appreciate you calling in, bro. We got another call. I'll praise all Shalom, most high quite blessed. Let's the next let the next caller come in. Hey, Shalom, caller, you on with Escaping the Plantation 2.0? Who we speaking with? Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name is Michael. I'm in uh, Washington State. You in where? Hello? Yes, sir. Where'd you say you was from, Michael? Yes, sir. Which... I'm in Washington State. All praises. All praise to the most high. What you got for us, bro? Hey, uh, I just had a few questions. Like, I'm, I've been following you guys for a while. And uh, this year, Daniel, a couple years, I just love you. I love y'all. I love y'all. All praises. I, just, I get so much out of y'all teachings. And I'm white. So I want to know, like, I mean, I have some what would be understood as like converted Jewish heritage from my, from my parents, from my parents, but uh, they didn't really practice nothing ever. And I know that Ashkenazi Jews are essentially converts from the Khazari. I studied, I tried to become a rabbi, and I was I was in school for about five to six years, and my wife couldn't go through all the things of Judaism and we were we believe in Jesus of course Yeshua so we couldn't really fit in there anyway and so I just want to know I was I'm trying to understand like obviously there's Vikings and Europeans and English and Irish there's so many different types of white folk and at the time of Rome uh you know Esau was obviously Rome so it's like how how do I understand who is Esau and which white person I can trust and which one I can. And obviously my own evil inclination in my body is, I can feel, I know it's true. Like I know the things you say are true because I feel it in my own blood, in my own body. Well, let me say and this. I know it's let me, for everyone and it's a miracle that through me. Right. Sure let me I can even talk to you. Oh, you know, praise. So, let, let, me inter let me interject real quick. So you said that you studied Judaism for five to six years, right? And you was going to, I was to, trying to be a rabbi. Yeah. You was trying to be a rabbi, but you an Israelite though. You black, right? I'm white. You white? Oh hell no! Yeah. Hang up the phone. I mean, as I as I learn more in Judaism, I realize the history. Don't hang up yet. I want to hear and this. I know that. Uh, was so black, so stop uh, stop stop hold up stop stop I gotta I gotta interject in this so you you are Edomite. So you eat a mic. I'm sorry. It's like feedback from me. Okay, it's a little feedback. I ask again so you can hear me clearly. You're an Edomite, is what you're saying. You you you're white. You're Caucasian. Your yeah, father's he, Caucasian. Yeah, yeah. I'm white, but I but I hear all the truth, and I know it's true. So what do okay. I do? How do I fit in? Okay, I got something all? for you. Okay, what this okay this help? okay this what you do. This what you do. So first and foremost, according to the Bible, the so-called white men are Edomites. There's no salvation for them, right? But for a thousand years, there'll be slaves in the kingdom of heaven. The best thing for you to do is keep God's commandments so that you can be a servant in the kingdom of God. That's it. That's, That's all you can right. do. That's one right. of, one of the two. That's all you can do. And let's make sure we back that up with Scripture. Give me that real quick in Isaiah no, chapter I 14. Have to back it up. I know it's true. I already know that. I, I'm glad I'm, you know I'm it's true. Uh, Michael, it was. It was Michael, right? You know it's true? Okay. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's what I'm, I'm telling you. 
with that. That's that's what I'm telling you. You need to do, bro. You need to just keep God's commandments. You understand? Because you know, maybe you'll well, get maybe you'll get my, some fame when you'll be my, one of the one of the the the, the, the main you know in servants friend, in the kingdom I'm until bad. until Christ comes. I mean, that's all I can say. He's gonna be a servant in the kingdom for a thousand years. Then it's done. Then you over. That's you know what right. I'm then you're done. But go ahead, read uh, Isaiah 14. We're gonna, hey, we're going to hang up on you, though, Mike. Hang up on Mike. Noah. I mean, I don't know what to say to Mike. I mean, I told him. I gave him counsel. Go ahead. <laughs> Verse 1. The we, book of Isaiah. We gave Chap Mike counsel. I mean, damn. Go ahead. Chapter 14 and verse 1. Yeah. Show you what the Bible says. Go ahead. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Go ahead. And will yet choose Israel. So the Bible says he's going to have mercy on Jacob and he's going to yet choose Israel. That's the right. The Lord going to choose the Israelites. I mean... <laughs> I mean, the scriptures say they come crouching, they come crying. I mean, I'm going to give them a real cool answer. Hey, you, you cool and everything, but, you know, <laughs> you going to slavery. If you're okay with that, that's fine. Jones, you just be a good, you're going to be a good slave. It is what it is. Go ahead. And set them in their own land. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Go ahead. And they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. So go ahead and cleave, because that's what's going to happen. But you can't come in here. You can't come yes, in here and, and worship with sir. us. You understand? You can't come in here and, and keep our feast days with Hell us. You understand? No. You can't do none of that. Right? You got to stay on the outside looking in and just keep God commandment from home. Watch from home, brother. You understand? Donate. You understand? Bene that's you know, donate right. to the cause. You know, join the booster club. I don't yes, know hell. You know, you sir. probably got nine hundred credit score to help us yeah. out. You know what I'm saying with that? That's all I can say. Do I'm just? I mean, what I'm supposed to say? That's what the Bible say. The Bible said they're gonna cleave to the house of Jacob. I'm gonna go with the scriptures say. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And the people <laughs> shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. For servants and handmaids, you're gonna be a servant. And you gonna be in your and, and the women gonna be handmaids. Go ahead. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. Read. And they shall rule over their oppressors. I mean, damn. I mean, what you want me to say? That's what the That's Bible says. Right. You gonna rule over our oppressors? Give yes, me Numbers twenty four eighteen. Sir. Give me Numbers twenty four eighteen. Then after a thousand years, it will be no more Esau. So you know, if you want to join a have a thousand year reign with us, you know, when I say reign, we reign and, and you serving. You understand? That's right. Then it's all good. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't want to do that. My advice to you, you already eat them, you might well gonna be wicked as hell. I mean, you eat all you ain't gonna kingdom anyway. You might well gonna live your life. <laughs> Living your best life. Go ahead. The book Bruh. of Numbers. You got two. me all topic, man. Chop I'm thinking, well, I'm thinking this is Jew. I'm thinking this is Israel. I'm, I sound kinda like Israel. Some you said I grew up in Judah. I'm me, like right. somebody's <laughs> Oh Lord. Go ahead. The book of Numbers, chapter 24 and verse 18. Don't be yeah. offended, Michael. Go ahead. And eat them. Shall be a possession. So the Bible said Edom gonna be a possession. Go ahead. Seir also shall be a possession for his for his enemies. Read. And Israel shall do valiantly. Go to Amos 9 and 12. Precept must be upon precept. Yes, sir. Amos 9 and 12. The book of Amos, chapter 9 and verse 12. Read that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen. Which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doth this. So you call yourself Christian, you call yourself Jewish convert, whatever the case may be. You call you say you call by the name of the Lord, which are not really you just those religions. But the Bible says that they, meaning the tabernacles of David that have fallen, the Lord gonna repair the breaches. All twelve tribes gonna rule in the kingdom, and it says that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And of all the heathen. So it ain't going to be just you. That's it's going to be other right. nations too. But you're, you're going to get destroyed. You're done. You understand? Yes, you're finished. Finito. sir. Oh, what was I? Um, we got another caller. Okay, let the next caller call. If it's Mike again, hey, Mike, look. Bruh, listen, bruh. We're going to hang up on you, bruh. Okay? Don't do that. Go ahead. Who raised you? Next call in. Hey, caller, you on with Escaping Plantation 2.0. Who we speaking with? Uh, my name is uh, Keith. Hey, what up with you, bro? How you doing? I'm doing fine. My, I'm just, I just recently, uh, retained it. And I mean, oh, and, 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 like, and, I, and I'm trying to say, cause I'm, I'm a, used to be an ordained I'm minister. Fine. My, I'm just, I just recently, uh, cut, cut your uh, TV down or whatever device you listen on, bro. It's a right. little, it's a little feedback. And I, and okay. You say you were ordained minister, right? I used to be. Okay. I, I repented that already. All praise. I'm a, I'm an Israelite. That's right. And when I, and I and I just repented like January second, third this year. So I, I'm new. I'm new, and I, I learn from y'all every day. I listen to y'all on uh, on YouTube, and I also listen to Watchmen of, of Israel, and also 
But I'm saying that the problem with the church, the pastor churches is that they don't teach the truth because we, we, they, what you do, they take a scripture and they make it to their own liking. Right. And that's confusing people. And that's what, uh, it confused me. Because even when I was coming up, uh, I was in Detroit. We had a lot of drugs and all that. And, but our pastor always talked about what's going on in Mississippi. Hmm. And I'm like, you well, how are we going to deal with these crack houses? These people stealing my shoes at school and all right. that stuff. Right. That's what so that's what the problem is. They always want to judge you and tell you what they what, what they think instead right. of what the Bible thinks. That's right. And then, and I found y'all, I found, I found the truth of who I am because I had to seek God with my own studies. And as I seek God in my own research and study, and I realized it's not about anything else but the bloodline. And, now, and even since I, God showed me that, Y'all had just re- reaffirmed and gave me a witness that, hey, this is who I am. That's and that's right. why I had converted. And I feel like I've been baptized in the word of God now. That's right. Yeah, that's truly what, baptized. That's right, that's, brother. That's hey, right. You that's, stay you stay in the spirit and you continue to learn as a as as uh you it's, to me it sounds like you're an older gentleman, but I mean as a young as young yeah. spirit in the truth. You understand? Because yeah. your your testimony gonna be huge moving forward if you endure, because it shows yeah. that a Christian pastor and a man of age can be able to humble themselves, like the scriptures say, and allow young men to show them and guide them in the scriptures and admit that they haven't been taught nothing and that they are deceived. That's right. So that's a beautiful thing. All praises to the Most High. We're going to move on to the next one. We appreciate you calling in, brother. All praise to the Most High. Hey, real quick, hey. just to get on what he said, give me that real quick in, um, in um, John 3 and 1 about Nicodemus. A lot of the Pharisees believe. A lot of the, the, the Christian pastors going to come into the truth in these last days. Some of them, that's some right. of them going to be humble like that brother right there. And they're going to come in the truth. Let's show you that. Because I want to get of, back to the topic. Three. The book of John, chapter 3 and verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees. Go ahead. Named Nicodemus. Named Nicodemus, read. A ruler of the Jews. So this brother had a position. This brother had a real deal position. And he came to Christ by night because he knew they were going to try to jack him up. Right? Go ahead. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Read. Rabbi. Rabbi. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. Wait a minute. Stop. Pause. Hold up. Listen to the wording because we never listened to the wording. What did he say? We what? We know. Who is we? Of the Pharisees. They were sitting amongst themselves. Nicodemus was sitting back like, hey, man, they talking about this dude. This man, know, this man he, he, he the real Messiah right here. Just like Christian pastors sit around and, and all the other pastors be around. They're like, yeah, the Hebrew is like, yeah, let's go against them. And then they leave and they be like, man, I ain't trying to go against these dudes. They're going to cut me up on the streets. Bruh. I've been watching them. That bitch from that thing on fire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These brothers is That's in the right. spirit. You understand? They know what they're talking about. They got historical facts. They got historical books. And they're going precept upon precept. And they explain the historic, uh, what happened in history. He done broke down the whole book of Revelation. That ain't never been done on, our, on earth, bro. Backwards from 22 to 1. Who's done that? John the Revelator didn't even know what it was. That's it. So I'm going to say it again. John the Revelator. Daniel didn't even know what he was writing. He didn't have an understanding. Message. He just wrote what I saw. Yeah, that's, yeah, I seen a beast, four beasts, and this beast, and that beast, that beast. Now, on the last day, Bishop come back on the scene and explain it, man. Your pastor can't explain <laughs> nothing. <laughs> right? So when they, when Nicodemus saw, it, he said, "Look, we know you. He, we know you the one. We know what you teaching is right. Same way with them brothers. Go ahead. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest. Not only can they not do miracles like you doing, they don't teach like you. They don't bring. Who teach like Bishop? Who teach like Bishop? That thing. Who teach like the deacons, the captains? Who who teach it on that level? Nah, not not now, nutter." What do you say? Not now. Don't nobody say that not now, nutter, like you say that now, nutter. <laughs> hey, go to chapter 7 real quick and read verse uh, 44. The book of John, chapter 7 and verse 44. Watch this. Go ahead. And some of we them. We ain't finished John Gray, did we? Damn, go ahead. And some of them <laughs> would have taken him. But no man laid hands on him. So some, like, I'll give you an example. We be out there on the street, and I know if they could get away with it, they'll try to put us to death. I know they would. You can see it in their spirit. That's right. Go ahead. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees. There go that name, Pharisees. Read. And they said unto them, why have ye not brought him? Read. The officers answered, 
Never man spake like this man. You sure you want to do this? Because ain't nobody ever talked like him. Like the stuff he bringing out, I ain't never heard it before. Go ahead. Then answer them, the Pharisees. Are ye also deceived? Oh, you tricked too. You got the devil on you. Go ahead. Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? Read. But this people who know not the law are cursed. These folks don't know the Bible. That's why they follow Christian. That's why they follow Israelites. You know what's funny? Christian pastors make videos going over stuff we already done demolished. Galatians 3 has been demolished, bro. The true understanding of Galatians 3 is in the earth right now. Christian doctrine and what they believe and what they taught, Bishop done smashed that 100 times over. Romans chapter 11, give me something else. He, uh, Romans 9, all that stuff been smashed. That's John right. 3, 16, smashed. Immaculate deception, smashed. All that stuff smashed. It's been smashed for years now, right? Revelation 22, <laughs> backwards, has been taught. It's over. You done. You can't go. You go and make these little videos getting five, ten views. Ain't nobody watching you. That's you right. might as well go on, get a little Facebook, boost your posts, put pay by three, four hundred dollars to boost your posts and make it seem like you got ten thousand views. Bruh. That's it. You promote it so it's somebody click on it. That's a view. You know what they do, right? It's called um, uh, target marketing. That's what cause I used to do it when I was at the radio station. They used to have us do that for certain businesses. Basically, they pay you a certain amount of money and you go boost they, boost their Facebook post for them, right? And get them more followers. When I was playing professionally, that's what some of the athletes used to do. Here it is. You're a rookie. You just got in the league. You go from having 7,000 followers to 180,000 in one day. No, Bruh. it don't work like that. That's not how it works, brother. They have people that are paid to inflate your followers. Most Bruh. of those follow followers are what they call bots. You understand? They're not real accounts. You understand? And that's what these pastors are doing today. Ain't nobody listening to you no more. That's you understand? Right. The people know. This the one. They, they the one. They, yes, this the truth right here. Sir. All by the glory and grace of the Most High God. Go ahead. Nicodemus said unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them. So Nicodemus was sitting there when they was plotting on him. Go ahead. Doth our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he do? You hear this? Nicodemus, he, he was convicted. He said, I got to say something. Hey. Our law don't judge nobody before you hear him. We got to hear the man out, man. Let's, let's, let's listen to him. You know they looking like, Nick. Oh, you oh, you, oh, you an Israelite now. Oh, oh, you a Hebrew Israelite now. <laughs> Go ahead. They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Oh, you a Galilean too. Oh, oh you studying with these niggas. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, you sending donations. Nice. Let me see your PayPal. Let me Bruh. see your PayPal. <laughs> Go ahead. Search and look. For out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. Out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. Them folks ain't been to none of our seminary schools. They don't know what we know. They ain't been to theology. Hey, put it up. I gave you a little screenshot of how much uh, it's, a, it's a, one of those Southern Baptist theologian schools, a seminary school. Show you how much they paying tuition a year for that. Look at that. Southern Baptist Theological Seminary cost of attendance. Out of state, $18,860. Mm -hmm. On campus room and board, $6,700. Average annual cost, $22,863. You know how much money that is to be lied to? What the hell is this? You're paying $22,863 to get lied to, and you got to go four years, you correct? Go four years. Let's, get, let's do the calculation. Let's do the calculation. Let's do the calculation right quick. What kind of class they got you in? You spent <laughs> for $91,452. Oh, wow. To get oh, lied to. No. You paying 100 bands to learn white supremacy. Hey, and that's what the Pharisees did. They was going to the church. They said, nobody believe on him. He went in our schools. <laughs> this is wild. You paying 100 bands to get lied to, man. Go ahead. What's wrong with you? Verse 53. And every man went unto you his own crazy. house. You niggas are crazy. Hold on, man. Come on, man. You can't play that way. It's all good. Go ahead. Go ahead. You good? You good? Go ahead. Read again. <laughs> and every man went unto his own house. So everybody left. They were like, man, get the hell up out of here, man. I'm tired. <laughs> hey, man. Bruh. The Pharisees hated Christ, bro. They hated That's Jesus, right? man. Hey, did we finish that on John Gray? Man, forget him. Drop that. I don't even want to talk about him no more. He a liar. The father, he was his father. He's of his father, the devil. Yes, hey, give me the one real sir. quick. Damn, how much time we got? Okay, yeah. Go to the video with the young looking brother with the um with the Ladreds. He had the audacity to put one of our captains in one of his pictures. So we're gonna deal with him. 
You see that right there? Christian Forgiveness Ministries. I've seen him on the street before. He go, he go back and forth with Christians on the street. He tried to do street ministry. He about to get his ass whooped because he don't know nothing. Right. Um, but let's deal with him because he's very um, audacious, Hi, my name is Pat very Stupid. sarcastic. So I want to deal with him. Pause that. Pause that. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you the timestamp. Let's just jump ahead. I don't want to do it because it's an hour-long video. We ain't got time to deal with all that. Give me 34 minutes, even. I want to deal with something. So he deal with eight points. One of the points is Deuteronomy 28. Another point is who is Edom. He says Edom. Who is Edom? Japheth. Ah! Um, salvation. Gentiles being saved. Do we have to keep the law? Those are some of the eight things he deal with. But I want to deal with this particular just point. It's like from 34 minutes to like 37. Let's start at 34 minutes even, if you can. If you're two seconds ahead, it's okay. 34 seconds. I mean, 34 minutes, excuse me. Yes, play it. They mingled in with the southern Jews. And guess what? They fought in the Jewish wars. And guess what? They mingled in with them, and they were sold into slavery with you. My Pause. Friends, you Pause. Might be Pause it. Pause it. He's talking about the Romans. When did the Bible say that? When did the Romans sell themselves? Come, go ahead. Play the Edomites that the Bible's talking about. No wonder so many black people were lynched. It could be that you could be the Edomite. Now, with all jokes aside, huh? lynching is wrong. Nobody should be punished unjustly. But I do believe that it's very possible that some of the seed of Edom went into the Horite region, fine, and were mingled in with the Japhites. Now, this is something, before Pause. I even get into this topic. He just made a joke about lynching. Right. He said, no wonder so many black people were lynching, because you might have a spirit of Edom in you. You know why he said that? Because we teach in the Bible, it's that Edom going to be slaves. We just read it. That's we just read right. the Mike the Edomite. You understand? I call that video that, Mike the Edomite, when you cut it up. All right. But anyway. We just read it to Mike, and Mike said, I accept it. This a black man. He said, no, Mike, no, don't accept it, Mike. Please be my slave master forever. Damn demon. Bruh. So he said, no wonder so many black people was lynched because Esau's supposed to be slaves in the upcoming kingdom. He said, well, y'all going to be slaves. That's why y'all was lynched. Some of y'all got Esau's spirit in you. Wow. These folks devils, man. Go ahead, play it. Topic of... Uh, uh, the Edom, Edomite being your servants, which I have no problem with, and I got to explain that before you uh, think of me as strange. Who are the Japhites? Now, since some of you believe that Edomites are the white people, well, then who is the Japhites? Well, according to the best historical resources, and you break down the table of uh, lineage and, 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 and about the Japhites, we know that Gomer was known as the Russians, the Galatians, the Celtics, possibly Cappadocians, or the Sumerians. Now, Russians look white, don't they? Gomer, the Gomerites. And all you need to do is do your own research about who the Gomerites were. Now, Gomer uh, had three sons, Ashkenaz. You ever heard of the Ashkenazic Jews? Where, where's Ashkenaz? Well, we're going to get there. Rifsva and Togerma. Well, Ashkenaz, most historians would point them towards the Germans and even the Assyrians. Rifka, now this is a strange nation, but uh, historians would say you, that they you, were the I want you half to listen real close. He said Ashkenazi are the Germans, right? I thought the Germans killed the Jews. So they killed their own people? Message! So wait, wait, you gotta I just, listen. I got a question. So is he trying to separate all of them from the Edomites? He's trying to say that he, the white man is Japheth. Wow. That's what Bruh. I'm trying to say. Watch how desperate he get. Watch this. Go ahead. Agonians, and I don't know who they are, and if you know who they are, wonderful, but some people put them in. They say that they mingled in with their other brothers. Torgama. Some people look at them as the Fergians or the Armenians. They look white, right? Or what about um, uh, uh, the other nations like Magog? Did you also did you notice that Magog is in Europe? Some the historians look at that as being referring to the Hungarians. Josephus, okay, you recognize Josephus, so do I. Refers Magog, the son of Japheth, as the progenitor of the Scythians or peoples north of the Black Sea. Okay, so these are known as white people. What about the Medes? Oh, everybody knows the Medes and the Persians. 
Medes and the Persians. Iranians. Okay. Japhethites. Iranians. Okay. Biblical scholars have generally identified Madai with the Iranian Medes. Okay. And we know according to the Book of Jubilees, chapter uh, 1035. Bruh. This is Christianity. These are Pharisees. That's right. They go outside of the Bible and go to the Book of Jubilee to explain their point. The hell These this? folks demons, man. This man who went to the Book of Jubilee to explain what the Bible already told you. Now, just for the sake of argument, because I like to argue, by the way. Okay. Uh, go to Genesis chapter 10. See, this is what happened when you don't know the Bible, you don't keep God's commandments, you don't know you're an Israelite, and you hate black Jesus. Read that real quick, verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 10 and verse 1. Now these are the generations of the son of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Read a little bit quicker. And unto them were sons born after the flood, the sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai. So Madai is the Medes, like you mentioned. Read. Javan and, Tup and Tubal, Go ahead. and Meshach, and Tiras, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Ashkenaz. Rifta, and Togomar, Go ahead. and the sons of Javan. Elisha. So Javon is Greece. Go ahead. And Tarshish and Kittim and Dodanim. By these. So stop. Pause it. So he ran he ran through all that. And he said, yeah, scholars say these are all white people. Right? This is where you went wrong. This is where you didn't read the Bible. Give me Genesis chapter 27. Let's see the blessing of Esau. Let's see. Genesis chapter 27, verse 38. Let's see the blessing of Esau. The book of Genesis chapter 27 and verse 38. Bring it out. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Esau going to live in all the best places on the earth. Go ahead. And of the dew of the heaven from above. And from the, and the dew of heaven from the, above, I mean, Esau going to be in every nation on the planet Earth. He's going to live everywhere. Watch this. But how he going to live there? Go ahead. And by thy sword. Whoa, 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 whoa. Read that again. And by thy sword shalt thou live. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Every man, is, everywhere this man has gone, he has destroyed, conquered, and colonized. So when you read about Goma and Magog and Tubal and Javan and all that, Esau went into those nations and stole them. That's right. He took that from the Japhites. He murdered the Japhites. He murdered the ancient Greeks that were today we know them as what? What we know them as, huh? White people. Today we know them as white people, right? But they weren't white. Because all Jeff, I mean, all Noah's sons was black like he was. That's right. All Noah's sons were black like he was. Noah was a direct son of Adam. Adam was a black man. His wife was black. <laughs> Their children were all black. You don't get that. <laughs> Come on yes, now. It wasn't sir. until who came on the scene. Esau, Edom came on the scene. Anything to go against us. This is a direct. He, he put one of the captains in the, in the thumbnail. I, when I seen it, I saw he got to get it. You understand? Esau will live right. by the sword. That's how he got in these lands, you idiot. And it wasn't Stupid. called, uh, when he got Gomer and all that stuff, the reason that the scholars got to go back and research it is because guess what? The white man changed the name. He that changed the name to Greek. He changed the name to Rome. He changed the name to Egypt. He changed the name to Europe. Hungary, Russia. Those weren't the names. He just explained it. Those weren't the names. Oh, those are white people. Those are white people. Russians are white people. No. They given themselves these names. Did you finish that? No, sir. Read. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Go ahead. Verse hold, on, hold on. Go from there real quick. Go to the book of Revelation. I don't want to. Go to Revelation 12 and 3. The book of Revelations, chapter 12 and verse 3. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Give me the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 25. It says, a great red dragon. This is a parable. This is a parable talking about who? Let's see. Great red dragon. Go ahead. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, and verse 25. Go ahead. And the first came out red. And the first came out red. So the children of Jacob 
he had two, or excuse me, the children of Isaac, he had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Esau was the firstborn. He came out red. Go ahead. All over, like an hairy garment. And he came, he came out red all over like a hairy garment. Go ahead. And they called his name Esau. What they call his name? Esau. They call his name Esau. I want you to pull up this picture I just sent you. Keep reading. Verse 26. No, do you read that right? Yes. Now go to Job 30 and 29. Yes, it said a great red dragon. Let's go. Yes, sir. The book of Job, chapter 30 and verse 29. Verse 29. Go ahead. I am a brother to dragons. What did he say? I am a brother to dragons. Uh huh. And a companion to ours. Why did he say I'm a brother to dragons? Because dragons identify people. That's what they're saying. This is a this talk, it's a parable talking about a person. When you read early in the chapter, it's the same people that was chased to the Caucasus Mountains. The people that he said are violent in the earth. That I wouldn't let sit with my dogs. That live in the worst part of Europe, which is the Caucasus Mountains, with no resources. Them the same folks. He said, yeah, they dragons. Go back to Revelation 12 and 3. Yes, sir. Are oh, you pulled it up already? Go ahead. You good. I did say pull it up. I did say that. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 3. Let's deal with this real quick. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Mm. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads. Seven heads. And ten horns. So this great red dragon are Edomites. Esau. And he got seven heads and what? Ten horns. Right? And seven crowns upon his heads. Look at it. Read that for us. What's some seven heads? The Let's seven look. heads, major empires. Greece. Greece. That's the white man. That's Esau. France. That's the white man. That's Esau. Russia. That's the white man. That's Esau. Great Britain. Great Britain is the white man. That's Esau. Rome. Rome is the white man. That's Esau. Spain. R uh, Spain is the white man. That's Esau. And Germany. And Germany. The white man. That's Esau. Give me the book of uh, Obadiah chapter 1 verse 1. We're going to deal with it because I'm tired yes, of them always trying to come sir. against us. Oh, say, no, that's two ball, Javan and Magog and Gog. And you doing a little bouncy. Like, Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> Stupid. You know, how, you know how the little, little kid be doing a little bouncy dance. That's what he doing. He done made a little song out of Magog and Gog and Gomer. Right, Shut the hell up. You Bruh. don't know what you're talking about. Now, go from there. Read that. You said Obadiah 1. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 4. Yes, Start at 1, then skip down to 4. Yes, sir. The book of Obadiah, chapter 1 and 1. You know one. what I'm going at, right? You know what I'm getting at, don't you? You in the spirit, is you with me? When, when he read it, you'll, you'll, you'll be too late by then, but... Okay, go ahead. Obadiah 1 and 1. <laughs> the vision of Obadiah, thus said the Lord God. Thus said the Lord God. Concerning Edom. Concerning who? Edom. You're concerning the Edomites. Skip down to verse 4. Verse 4. Though thou exalt... Three, three, three. Verse 3. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. So Edomites have a prideful spirit. Hmm. Go ahead. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Hold up. Wait a minute. These people dwell in the clefts of the rock. Now we know them as Caucasian, which mean what? Cave dweller. That's what Caucasian mean. Cave dweller. They lived in the Caucasus Mountains. Before that, they lived in Mount Sierra, a literal mountain. Go ahead. Whose habitation is high. And they love to be have skyscrapers, skyscrapers way up the, the penthouse. You don't see black folks sleep in no penthouse. We don't Hell like to look out no. the window and see our, oh, man, oh, I ain't, ain't going to get close. Esau love to live up there. Bruh. Love it. Go ahead. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So for Esau to say in his heart, who shall bring me down, that means the last day Esau going to have power. He going to be a ruler. Read. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Now, hold up. Wait a minute. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. You got that for me? I knew you were going to catch me. I knew you were going to catch me. You were in the spirit. Uh-oh. Whose symbol is the eagle? That's America right there. Message. You, got, you ain't got Spain, do you? Look up Spain. All them seven heads we just read. Greece, Spain, Germany, Russia, um, what, France. Right? Who else? Great Britain. Who else was it? That's seven right there. I just said seven. <laughs> and America's the eighth one that wasn't at, established at the time. Pull up Spain for me. Let's just pull. Let's just use the scriptures, man. See what the scriptures say. Ock. 
Read uh, four again for us. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Read. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Read. Thence will I bring thee down. So in the time, it was 1969 when they went to the moon. In 1969, they went to the moon. They said, the eagle has landed. The Lord said, from that time on, America been on his way down. You understand? You got it? Would you have to pull up Spain? Okay, don't worry about it. Anyway, so that's the great red dragon with the seven heads and the ten horns and the seven crowns upon his head. Those are Edomites. So you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay? Uh, anyway, go from there real quick. Go to, uh, it was something else I wanted to pull. I just wanted to smash him real fast. Why are you laughing? Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's just sad sir. to see those, like, you know what I'm saying? Our brothers will really sit down. And he may not be a, a Israelite. He but, may not be. <laughs> but they will really sit down and go out their way to disprove us who raised you and not realizing that what they really trying to disprove is the bible is the bible <laughs> you crazy you trying to disprove the scriptures hey go to that real quick for me right go to it real quick for me the jew three project and give me acts 13 uh 44 and 45 get straight to the point get to 45 so we showing you that the the, the christian past day they rolled in the, in the spirit of the pharisees Watch this, Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blasphemy. That, did, does that not happen on Clubhouse every night? You wouldn't know you got Android. Don't that not happen on Clubhouse every night? Every yes, single sir. night that happened on and on <laughs> Happen on Clubhouse, but you know it. <laughs> it's okay. Get your, get your iPad, bro. Uh, anyway, yes, so sir. every night on Clubhouse that happened, you see they little group, they little group got 40 people in there. Then you look over, you see our group, Biblical Smoke, you understand? <laughs> and you see it's got 900 people, 1,000 people, 1,200 yes, people. I'm sir. talking about people be on the 3, 4 in the morning. Clubhouse ruining people's households. That's Husbands right. ain't coming to bed. Wives yeah. got their earphones in with their back turned. I mean, what you oh, over there doing? You over there every night. Oh, why, you put that, why you put your... <laughs> I'm in the house. Why you got your shower cap on in the bed? What you doing, woman? I, don't learn. I just learned from the Israelites. We got to have our head covered. Let me listen to that. You understand? That's what's going on every single night on Biblical Smoke on Clubhouse. You understand? And they filled with envy. They see the multitudes of people say, why our group don't never get this people? You know what? Let's do how other, other Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites do. Let's put IUIC in our title. Showing you that these Hebrew Israelites that hate us, you the same as the Christians, bro. You a Pharisee. You a Christian. Because <laughs> wow. the Christians and the Israelites don't have nothing in common. They don't believe the same. But for the hatred of IUIC, they'll come together. They'll come together. Get that real quick in Mark 3 and 6. Same thing the book of Mark say. Same thing. Is that 3 and 6 or 6 and 3? I always get it backwards. I think it's 3 and 6. Read 3 and 6. The book of Mark, chapter 3 and verse 6. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. The Pharisees and the Herodians didn't have nothing in common. The Herodians were people that believed on Herod. They were politicians. They was the black bourgeoisie. But they saw something in common with who? The Pharisee. They said, look, we got to destroy Jesus. Message. We got to destroy this man. Showing you that these, uh, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? These um, unusual alliances, people that you wouldn't usually see aligned or, or they got the same beliefs, right. will come together to come against the Israelites. Go ahead, officer. They would like the uh, saying, like you probably heard, they say, um, the enemy of my enemy right. is my friend. Whoa, that's some heavy stuff. That's that. That's it. That's exactly what that is, right? Uh, yeah, read 12 and 13 and Mark. So they saw the they saw the multitude. They was in envy, showing you that these Christians they rolling in the spirit of the Pharisees, same spirit. Go ahead. Read the book guy. of Mark, chapter twelve and verse thirteen. Bring it up. And they send unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians, the two people that have nothing in common. They do not believe the same thing, but they came together. They joined alliances to come against Christ. Go ahead. To catch him in his words. And when they were set up to do what? What they were trying to, to do? To catch him in his words. You think these folks ain't on Clubhouse recording? Message. They on there doing it. They recording what we saying. They taking our pictures. They trying to find us. We got to do something about these people. Now give me the Jew 3 project that I told you to pull up. Look at that. 
This is called a Jew 3 project. Zoom in. Tell you, zoom in on that. Ten zoom things in. to study before engaging black Hebrew Israelites. You see that? Bruh. They giving these folks a guideline. They giving these folks, they giving them a precept packet. Hebrew Israelite 101. <laughs> <laughs> they got a 50 deep oh, no. <laughs> 50 deep. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> Read it for us. As Christian apologists, we are called to defend the hope we have within us. Meaning white supremacy, because you hope for the American dream, nigger. That's right. Go ahead. However, we must do this strategically and not ignorant. Meaning, don't walk up on them brothers not knowing what you're talking about, because they go put you on camera, and they're going to blast you, and everybody going to see you a liar. Right. <laughs> go ahead. Many times, well-meaning believers seek out of maleficent arguments or renegade crusades without adequately preparing themselves through study. You hear this? They said some of these Negroes running up on these folks thinking they know something, and they get smashed on camera. Yeah. So if you ain't sir. good, you better make sure you study before you. In other words, see, that's what I'm saying. How how do you give me Acts 413? How you gonna say the spirit of Christ ain't with the Israelites, but you gotta study before you approach them? If we ignorant and what we're saying is wrong, then why you gotta study before them? You should be able to smash us easily. You should be able to come up and smash our doctrine very easily, but you can't do it because our doctrine that's ain't right. ours. It's the fathers in heaven. Go ahead. The book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. So they see us out there teaching boldly, just like our forefather Peter. Go ahead. And perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. Because that has happened to us. We've been on the street teaching, and they see us out there with our black with our black pants, our black boots, our shirts. They say, they pull up on these dudes. Hey, dude, on the, and why, I say, why, why, we go, why we go mess with the Israelites real quick? Then run up there, and they be run back home. What's wrong with you, baby? Israelite. <laughs> Remember, the, hey, didn't a dude tell your wife that? Didn't a dude's uh, girlfriend tell your wife that? Remember we smashed oh, yeah, that dude yeah, on the street? Yeah. What did he say? Tell, tell the testimony, bro. Give him your testimony. Yeah, the brother, he came. It's, it's a video. You can watch the video. It's video proof of this. The brother came up. He uh he had a problem with the doctrine. And uh, <laughs> Maria, uh, she did the sister's hair or whatever. And uh, she ended up telling her, like, like, your husband in this right here? Right. Oh, my, my husband came out there with y'all. And she pretty much told him. That he said out his mouth that he got smashed <laughs> by the word of God. I'll praise the Lord. That's beautiful. Yes, he jumped out the car coming to argue. He said, Oh, I'm a deep fried Christian. Yeah, I'm a deep fried Christian. Yeah, he was deep fried, all right. By the time he left, he was extra crispy. Bruh. He got his ass cooked, overcooked. He was burnt chicken. Go ahead, free what you got. And perceive that they were unlearned and ignorant men. So they see us and they say, they don't know what they're talking about. They out there yelling on the street. None of the apostles did that. That's what they're thinking. Go ahead. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. I can't say nothing against these dudes. These dudes really know what they're talking about. I'm going to have to set up a whole Jew 3 project. I'm going to have to set up a One Truth Conference. I'm going to have to get all the best Christian minds together, all the best uh, scholarly, scholarly books together to try to confound these folks because I'm going to have to do a play on words. I'm going to have to be, give me that real quick in 1 Corinthians 1 and 17. I'm going to have to do a play on words. I'm going to have to trip them up in their words because they'll try to, because a lot of Christians, especially like on Clubhouse and things like that where they can actually speak, they like to use big words like hermeneutics and uh, exegesis and eisegesis and stuff, stuff that they know we don't give a damn about. Right, they'll use that and That's they'll try to confound right. us with that. But we ain't getting into that. We are gonna use the Bible. What the Bible say? Yes, to hell with your big words. Sir. You understand? Read what you got. The book of First Corinthians, chapter one and verse seventeen. Read. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Go ahead. Not with wisdom of words. Not with wisdom of word and big, deep, long words. You don't even know what they mean. You just use it because you heard your Edomite slave master use them. You don't even know what they mean. Read. Lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Says, Lest the cross of Christ be made of none effect. We here to teach the cross of Christ. We here to teach that Christ died for the sins of the nation of Israel. Repent and be converted. That's what we here to teach. They want to do all these big words and hermeneutics and uh, exegesis, eisegesis and all that stuff. We don't care nothing about that. You understand? We're going to teach yeah, what the word of nah. God say, man. Right? Did you finish? The, go back to that real quick. So they say you better be well studied before you run up on the Israelites or they're going to smash you. Go ahead. This is tragic because God calls us to be prepared, tragic, and well studied for the proclamation of his word. Mm -hmm. One particular cult Christian apologist should certainly be prepared to engage all the black Hebrew Israelites. One particular cult Christian. Hmm. Go ahead. Without preparation, a believer can walk away discouraged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Bruh. This is true. <laughs> Read on. Deflated. Read, Read it again, please. Without Read it again. Hey, they desperate, bruh. They desperate. They they sitting around thinking about like how we gonna you know is you know the word of God done cut their spirit to where they sitting around thinking how we gonna destroy these people. That's the same thing they did with Christ. Except from that time on, they eyed him on how they would destroy him. Why, hey, go ahead and continue to read that, but I want you to get something loaded up for me. Get Matthew 12, 14 real quick. I want to get you that, get that loaded up for me. Without preparation, a believer can walk away discouraged. You're going to be discouraged when they smash you with the scriptures. Deflated? You're going to feel deflated when they smash you with the scriptures. And even dejected. And you're going to feel dejected when they can smash you with the scriptures. Go ahead. Because of the strenuous effort of persuading this unique cult. Because it's a battle. When you walk up on us, you got, no, 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 no. We're not running from that. What that mean, his hair was like wool and feet like unfired bread. Now, don't run over here. What that mean? You understand? We're going to hold you hold you to it, right? We're going to make you explain your doctrine. Go ahead. Black Hebrew Israelites are often very well studied in the Bible. Wait a minute. So if we're very well studied in the Bible, why are you trying to come against us? Why you won't just believe? Because you weren't set up to believe. Some of you were set up to be the devil. To come Man. against the true followers of Christ. Because some of you are Pharisees in the spirit. Go ahead. Equipped with historical trivia. We know, we know what we're talking about historically. And familiar with frequent objections. And we're familiar with John 3.16. That's what it means, frequent objections. We're familiar with Jew and Gentile. We, honest, we know how to smash that. We're familiar with the law done away with. We're familiar with 1 Timothy 4. All you got to do is pray over it, sanctified by the word of God in prayer. We know all that. We're going to smash you with that. Our soldiers, our young men, 17, 18-year-old young men walking here going to smash you in John 3.16. We got 12-year-olds smash John 3.16 like it ain't nothing. You understand? That's right. But how you know that's the spirit of Christ right there? You can't gainsay it, bro. Read what you got. Him, uh, officer, real quick. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, in verse 14. Go ahead. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him. Uh -huh. How they might destroy him. How they do what? Might destroy him. They said, we got to come together on how to destroy him. Give me that one truth conference. Bible real, man. These the Pharisees. These folks the Pharisees, bro. They wrote in the same spirit, the Pharisees. Give me the one truth conference. You got it? It's a little link. They coming together with conferences. They coming together with all kind of manners of, of objections and things to try to come against the Israelites. You the main problem on the planet Earth, brothers. You men that go out and teach the gospel, you the main issue for all nations on this planet. Look at that. They got a whole website called the One Truth Conference. Read it out. One Truth Conference. What every Christian should know about the Hebrew roots, Messianic, and Black Hebrew Israelite movements. They don't care nothing about no Hebrew roots. They don't care about no Messianic Jews. They care about the black Hebrew Israelites. That's why they put it in there. Go down. Zoom in. About the conference. The One Truth Conference is an apologetic conference that was birthed from an idea of two local churches that desire to bring awareness uh -huh. and equip other church leaders and lay persons to defend the One Truth found in Jesus Christ. Go ahead. We plan to equip them to engage with the multi multifaceted ideologies that they will inevitably encounter living in a college town Damn. or doing evangelistic work in urban context. In urban context. So when you go to the hood, them black folks ain't trying to hear the Bible. That's what they saying. You go to the hood and our people ain't trying to hear white man Jesus. They don't want to hear that. Them little young brothers and young sisters running you off the block. So they said, look, we got to be able to deal with them. Go ahead. We also felt the need to provide a platform to bring awareness of certain unbiblical worldviews or movements that are not ordinarily on the radar of most evan evangelical apologists. Remember, we, remember we, did a, we did a show on evangelicals. They racist. So he's an urban apologist and an evangelical apologist. So you what? It's a divide even in the apologetic community. Go down. These are the speakers. Look. Ernest Cleo Grant. I just want to deal with the black folks. Ernest Cleo Grant II. Ernest is a pastor, writer, community advocate, and urban apologist. He served as the Connections Pastor at Epiphany Fellowship of Camden, New Jersey. And go, his go down. Joe Elliott. Joe Elliott. Joe Elliott is a native of Chicago, Illinois. 
but moved to the state of Mississippi as a teenager. He lived a life of crime and found himself serving a mandatory 20-year sentence with the state of Mississippi Department of Corrections. Hey, Joe, if you're still in Mississippi, pull up. Pull up the camp. Go to Marcus yes, Webb. Marcus sir. Webb. Marcus Webb used to be with us. He, Him and his twin brother used to be with IUIC. Him and his twin brother. One of them a porn star now. Go ahead. Uh, Marcus huh? Webb is a devoted Christian who lives and serves in Richmond, Virginia in urban apologetics. That brother left. He left the Israelites and joined the Pharisees, bro. He left Christ and joined the Pharisees. Go ahead. You Doing think debates. God's not going to hold you guilty for that? Oh, God going to hold you guilty for that. You blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Doing debates and counseling people struggling with Hebrew Israelite family members. He counsels people that are struggling with Hebrew Israelite family members. He oh, was, my God. Go ahead. He was a black Hebrew Israelite for seven years. And then look at the devil. Look at him. Look where the little parts live. Go down and look at Esau. Esau, Edom. Look, Satan himself. We ain't going to even give him the time of day. We ain't going to even say what his name is. The devil, the Bible speak of. Esau, Edom. That's right. You understand? So they got a whole conference together, bro, to come against the Israelites. We must be doing some damage. The spirit of God is doing damage in the earth through the prophets, bro. Yes, You sir. understand? You is doing damage on the earth, brother. That's why I say you brothers, stay gift, stay in the spirit. Ask the Lord for the gift of prophecy. Ask the Lord to go out and teach on the street, give you the spirit to do the work of the Lord. Don't faint in these last days because you causing an issue on the planet, bro. You just turn the whole world right side up by going out there and teaching the gospel. These folks scared. They got precept packets. We didn't even continue to read because we, we ain't got time. We got to shut down. We didn't even continue to read. They got precept packets Bruh. to stop the Israelites, bro. They doing conferences to stop. They got ex Israel. They got S I U I C members counseling people about the Israelites. Huh? Pharisee. Mama come up saying, "My baby don't want to come to Christmas no more. He got the answers. He got the answers for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right." Devil the Bible speak of the Pharisees hated Christ. Modern day Christian pastors today hate us. You understand? All praise to the Most High. So get the Lord a round of applause for that show. Uh, which it? Okay, I'll pray. You in the spirit? Okay, stay, stay strong in the Lord. Somebody said do a part two. All praise. We'll do a part two next week. Lord's will. We'll go deeper in depth. But you can see, without a shadow of a doubt, modern day Christian pastors, them the Pharisees. They, they roll in the spirit of Pharisees. So with that being said, we over our time, so let's go ahead and shut it down. Captain Joel class coming up next at 8.30, our time, 9.30 Eastern, so let's get out the way for that. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for tuning in today to another Escaping uh, Plantation 2.0. I'm Officer Zariah, to my right. Officer Zariah. To, uh, to my left, to my right. <laughs> Officer Zariah. And to my far right. Soldier John. Hey, give a shout-out to Officer Malachi and his team, Soldier Alicia, Soldier Baruch, Soldier Jeremiah, and the brothers that was able to come today and the sisters that serving the food in the back. All right, so we're going to get it in. Shalom, most high in Christ, blessed. Stay in the spirit. Shalom. Shalom. We was on the bottom. Yeah. Now we headed to the top. On my level, don't see anybody. I don't see them. This my hair can never stop. This my hair can never stop.